There's no time. Hello, individuals. It is episode 153. Yeah, and I've already started. Yeah, he's I've a, already started. Seriously, we, we've we're, been working. We're trying to get ahead, so we've yeah. like already recorded a bunch of stuff today, and you guys know how that goes. Yeah, I've already, <laughs> I've already been drinking for more than an hour, so yeah. I'm already revved up. The entertainment will start soon. <laughs> Oh I'm already forgetting words. Jenny's having to like pause stuff, <laughs> edit edit out pauses to remember people's names, and yeah, it's good. Because he's man. like, what? Else? I'm like, <laughs> I've been talking about Johnny Carson and Tonight Show. Yeah, I told him it's like, and I might have mentioned this on the show before, but because we were talking about Johnny Carson on like another thing that we just uh, recorded, yeah. and I was like, do you know that this is maybe something you don't know, but it's like every time I go to push the record button. I hear the Johnny Carson theme song in the back of my head. He was the man. Yeah. And so so was Ed. I don't, I don't know why. I just... So was Ed. Ed, Ed McMahon. He yeah. was the man too. You could tell that Ed was Ed was blasted. Yeah. He was blasted. Pretty much of... everyone was he blasted hold, was, on those yeah. shows. And this show is the whole of the seventies. This show is a 70, 1970s style show. We're gonna give you entertainment and information, and uh, yeah, we drink during this. Go ahead and have a drink. Half of our, half the people who listen. <laughs> Drink. They're drinking the same stuff you're drinking. Yeah. They're drinking Ask the, me what it is I'm cool drinking, time. and then they're make, making the same drink that I drink, which is equal parts. It's equal parts tequila. Usually, reposado. I like reposado tequila, you know what I mean? Uh, which, But you can use silver and gold, all right? So it's one part that, one part guava nectar, which you get that, uh, like in the... Um, in the import International section. International section. section. In, 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 your grocery in the store. grocery store. So you got to get that guava. And then you put pineapple in there, pineapple juice. Yeah, it's third, third, third. Heavy ice. This isn't Germany. This is a tropical fucking drink, okay? Yeah, it's, it's like 400 heavy degrees ice. here, seriously. Heavy ice. Stir it, man, and it's just fucking beautiful. I call it Lord Cool Cool Khan, okay? <laughs> the Lord of Mexico. It'll make you want to tear someone's heart Fucking out. right, exactly. <laughs> Good shit. Approved in Mexico. <laughs> Approved in Mexico. Jair, Jair, my buddy in fucking TJ, he, he loves it. He loves it. You know, this is a good Mexican drink. I just have Mexican American drink. I just have a boring ass screwdriver, mm. like usual, because I love my vodka. Yeah, and I'm tan and bar. Yeah. Okay. It is. Today, what are we listening to? What are we doing today? Dude? All right. Now, this was actually a really cool suggestion that I kind of like spun off in my own direction. One of our British listeners, um, a long time ago, requested like, "Why don't you do something about this serial killer known as the Blackout?" Ripper. Yeah, I know a little bit about him. Yeah, yeah, and like I didn't really know a lot about that. So like the more I looked into him, I'm like, wow, that's like a fascinating case. And yeah. it happened during World War II. Now, while I was researching that, I came across a similar crime, uh, which also happened during World War II, just in a different country. And this guy was called the Brownout Strangler. Okay, so we got two cases. So we there. got two different cases that we're going to talk about. Very similar okay. situations, similar yeah. type of thing going on. So I thought, well, let's just throw them both. They're both World got War more II. Shout outs? They both. Um, I don't think so. Like I said, I might have. I was going to, um, you know, shout out. Like I said, if you didn't notice our matinee show. Yeah. Uh, you know, we kind of changed the format of a little bit so we could. Review movies that had gone straight to VOD, like Netflix, or or that didn't play in our theaters and stuff like that. Because we, yeah. you know, my car went tits up, and yeah. you know, I can't afford to get it fixed, and I got to save up money to get another one. I'm so. gonna buy another car. Jenny probably go half on it with me. Yeah, so we're. I want to get a Cadillac. Jenny's like, I can't afford a Cadillac. I think we can afford a Cadillac. We'll see what it is. We'll see. We'll see what it's I want on one you, of those man. newer Cadillacs. <laughs> I want a fucking old man car. Yeah. So I can drive in that <laughs> shit like that. Because I do all the driving. Jenny doesn't even like to drive. I hate driving. But, well, I was I was in a wreck. That's why. Yeah. Not like uh, we're still getting t-shirts returned because we fucked up the postage. But it's okay. We'll send it. Who is this, Jenny? Tell them we'll send it back to them. This is... Do, do, do. Okay, this is Natalie. Natalie, so, we'll send it yeah, back. We're going to send it back. We, yeah. yeah, I'm actually kind of glad that I'm getting them back because... It won't happen again. I didn't, yeah, I didn't want anybody to get them with postage due, so I'm right. like, oh, thank goodness. Okay, so I think most of them came back now. Mm -hmm. So I, that might be the last one to come back, and I'll just send it out. Well, you'll get your tomorrow. shirt in a bit, Natalie. We'll send yes, it out we'll tomorrow. Yes, we'll probably send it out tomorrow and uh, put the right amount of postage on it because I guess we fucked that up. So, yeah. you know, 
we, we messed well, it up. Well, we sent it as an envelope instead of sending it as a package. But to well, me, that's a fucking envelope. Well, but. it's called a padded envelope. But yeah. apparently, I mean, the lady at the post office, she was like, yeah, it's only an envelope if it's just paper. If it has, right. like, other shit in there, like right. padding, then it's a package. Okay. So I was like, all right, fair enough, whatever. I can see how that goes. All right, so on today's show, like I said, we're going to be talking about two crazy motherfuckers who, during World War II on separate continents... Uh, when there were war conditions, blackouts, brownouts, what have you, they decided to take it upon themselves to be like, hey, I'm going to butcher a bunch of women in a very short yeah. amount of time because it's dark out and no one will catch me. Although, yeah. spoiler alert, they both got caught almost immediately because yeah. they were idiots. This is uh, the World War II era. And of course, there was a draft on, which means that uh, the armies of all these nations are not being very choosy about who gets in. And you're going to suck up some serial killers. <laughs> that's, that's just going to happen. Well, in any and, population uh, of yeah, they're out men, there. largely. I mean, there's not a lot of female killer, serial killers. Not in, not there's, of this type, anyway. You suck up a couple million men, there's going to be a serial killer there's or two in there. At least one. And, yeah, <laughs> and they're going to use military cover, the military system, and the, and the environment of warfare as a cover yep. for, what they're, for what they do. And that's what this story is about. Yeah. Now, it's, it's sexual predators, man. Sexual predators under the cover of warfare fucking you up and fucking raping women. Bad I'm, shit. Doing it probably in uniform and then the army gets all the blood. They were. Terrible. Terrible. They were. Fucking disgrace. And these dudes need to be hung by the neck until they're dead. They were. Good. Okay. <laughs> as far as I know, both of them were. <laughs> Good. Good. But yeah, that's, yeah these, these dudes. It's weird, but like the first guy, the blackout ripper, in a way is kind of like... Um, weirder to me because he didn't have a history of it. You know, he came from a good family. Nothing. There was nothing like in his past that would suggest that he would just suddenly be like, oh, it's dark. I'm going to start killing people. Um, the second guy, Brownout Strangler, that he was kind of a different situation. Like he kind of had a shitty family. And so I could, you know, there were like his brothers were criminals no excuse also. For any of this, no, I'm but... just saying, but it's more right. understandable yeah, in the second the bad case environment because he had some bad... shit going right. leading up to it. Whereas the first guy, it just seemed like normal, 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 and then bam. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which abuse, to me is always weirder. An abusive environment will create an abusive person. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And that's definitely, I think, what happened in the right. second case. But in the first case, I'm not really sure what his fucking problem was. He must have just been had like fucking mental problems or sexual problems. <laughs> Got them sexual problems. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like Dennis Rader. <laughs> I'm well, sure. you know, sometimes, you know, man. I just have these sexual problems. I have to, you know, I just have to tie you up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I ain't talking about it. <laughs> Fuck Dennis. I'm going to get back to my fucking cool. Thing. I'm sure. Well, the drunker you get, I'm sure Dennis will have to, like, <laughs> pop out. Yeah, well, yeah, well. Yeah. He'll pop out of yeah, the drink well, and, like, yeah. have, have some insight. <laughs> fucking Dennis. Into some of this shit. All right, so. I channeled the ghost of Dennis Rader, even though that fucker is still alive. I don't understand how it happens. He's escaping prison through astral projection. And I'm I'm his fucking vessel. He fucking goes. <laughs> oh God! You know what's funny is that we were at uh, our our monthly uh, golf night here in Orlando, Memento Mori, which you know check it yeah. out if you're ever in the Orlando area on the third Monday of the month. Mm -hmm. And they played. Uh, I don't know if you guys know like that are into like you know EBM or industrial or anything like that. But there's a song called BTK. By and torture, torture and, and kill. kill. Yeah. yeah, and uh, I don't remember who it's by offhand. Yeah. But uh, so that song came on like this past dancing. Monday, and I'm just yeah. like, and I was like looking. I'm going sexual problems. Yeah, sexual you got problems. sexual problems. <laughs> and no, I know what we're talking about, but you know. So this first guy, uh, known as the Blackout Ripper. Uh, his actual name was Gordon Cummins. Now, at the time that his murder spree occurred, he was a serial killer, but also more a spree killer because his killings happened like over like less than a week period. Mm. Um, it was kind of like a Jack the Ripper type situation, yeah. but not even that, you know, stretched out. It was just over a couple of days. Um, yeah, so he was 28 years old at the time the murders occurred. Now... What ended up happening with him, he was um, a fairly good-looking dude, um, had a good education, came from a decent family. Now, he did tell people, and I don't think this, they don't know a huge amount about his family background, um, but they do know that he came from, like, a pretty normal, like, you know, middle class to upper middle class family. He did have a tendency to tell people later on that he was the illegitimate son of, like, some 
you know, Baron or Duke or something like that. Yeah, wasn't he in the RAF? He was, yeah. Okay, yeah, we're thinking of the same one then. Yeah. Yeah, he, he tried to style himself as a count. Kind of like a yeah, Empress. so that's what so that's what like his uh, buddies is, they call yeah. him the Count or the Duke or something because yeah, of this is this is typical of this kind of, this kind of guy, you know what I mean? Uh, where they're they're there's nothing to them, yeah. So they're very insecure and they try to puff themselves up into something that they're not, and then they use this image to go out and fucking rape and kill women, yeah. You know, cause and that, this one mutilated them also, yeah. Hence he's, Ripper, he's a shit bag. Well, yeah, I, yeah, that should go without yeah. saying. They're almost always pathological liars, too. I mean, uh, I'm sure we're going to get into that. Probably, he's probably a fucking heavy liar, right? Um, yeah, I guess they didn't really know. Like I said, they don't know a great deal about him because this happened in the 1940s. It's not yeah. like nowadays where they like, weren't profiling that. Where, well. Yeah, they weren't profiling, and it's like there wasn't like 40 million right. like you know media things about him. And this, and like I said, it happened over a very brief period of time. Over yeah. a brief period of time, he killed. Four women, and then he, right. you know, only a few days after that, he got caught. Um, Guarantee so, you, he was a pathological liar and just yeah. lied his ass off. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Sure. But yeah, so uh, he was originally from a place called New Earswick, I guess that's how you pronounce it, uh, near York. He was married. Uh, he married a the secretary of a theater producer. I believe her name was Geraldine. Uh, they got married in 1936. She was apparently super into him. I don't know if she ever reported like any abusive behavior. He didn't have any history of violence, any kind of history of any criminal record of any kind, um, nothing like that. So in a way, like I said, that's, again, what I, what I find a little weird. So World War II starts in 1939, and he enlisted in the RAF in September of that year. Like I said, his buddies in the RAF called him the Count or the Duke because he told people that he was... That his dad, he was like the bastard son of like some fucking landed right. gentry or whatever. Even though they don't know if that's the case. It, it very well could be, but, you know, they, they don't really have any way of proving that. Now... Landed gentry. Yeah. <laughs> that, that might mean something in Europe and the UK. <laughs> landed gentry doesn't mean shit here, okay? Because like in you, Mississippi, there's a lot of people that have a whole shit ton of fucking land. And their daughters are twerking on the back of a mud truck. All right, and they're out there fucking wrestling alligators, say, and yeah, they probably own the acre that their mobile home is sitting. Yeah, on. they got a mobile home <laughs> sitting on it and twenty acres and shit. All right, land and gentry. So, well, depending on where you are, I mean, land is pretty cheap. Yeah, my mom and my stepdad own. My dad would be the land and gentry. Florida. He's got fucking hunting rights on all kinds of land and hunt more land That's than a damn mean. medieval king had. And he's yeah. out there fucking hunting deer and shit, you know. And if you could call my dad land and gentry, I'd start laughing. You should yeah, go. My you, land. <laughs> you should go around telling people. Get off my land. <laughs> and it is his land. It is his land. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. my deer. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, it was just like the old days. It was like when the king has like you could if you kill the king's deer, yeah, man, you I'm can like hang them. Got my, that's my deer. <laughs> yeah. That does it. That's exactly what it's that's what my dad talks like. By the way, if you hear like sound in the background, that's one of our very famous. Big old song. Central Florida summer storms. Yeah, because we're recording this like in the afternoon. Yeah, like late afternoon. Yeah, it's kind of like crawl. We saw this movie called Crawl. Yeah, we saw Crawl. And, <laughs> and I'm like, taking place in yeah, Florida. Florida. <laughs> it's about right. Where it floods and attacks and fucking all attacked by a whole bunch of alligators. Yeah, it was a funny movie. Where you could looking, but the, the tone was kind of off. I thought it was. You liked it. it. I li yeah, I liked it. I, I can see what you're saying though. It's like maybe they should have gone a little more like sci-fi move, like you yeah, know, crocodile tarantula or something. I couldn't like take that it seriously. It. I'd like to see it when I was drunk. It'd be fun. Well, we, yeah, we can do that. I'm yeah. sure it'll be out on Netflix pretty soon. Okay, yeah. You know what's weird about like Florida though? It's like I'm, t you know, I'm. I was born in Florida and I've seen. Al I see alligators all the time, but it's like, um, you know, I'm still terrified of them because you know they could eat me, and I don't really. I'm kind of scared of anything yeah. that could eat me, like a normal person should be. But I have seen them, like, just in normal situations. Like, I've been, mm -hmm. like, driving down, like, the fucking highway. Like, I was driving down 1792 one time, and I saw an alligator just, like, booking it, like, across, yeah. just, like, running. Like, it almost got hit by a car, because the car yeah. was like, oh, alligator. Yeah. And I've heard that, like, I've never been to the Everglades, but I've heard of people, you know, tourists that go to the Everglades, and they're like, you know, if you go to, like, Alligator Alley, which is, like, the road that goes all the way across the state, like, through the, through the Everglades, it's like you walk through this hiking path, and there's alligators just sitting there, and people yeah. are just, like, stepping over them. Because what yeah. else are you gonna do? We got a lot. Of, we got British subscribers, man. I'd, I'd like. <laughs> They're to everywhere. 
We got British subscribers that say stuff, and I gotta fucking back them up and say, well, you know, a lot of the stories that I tell and a lot of things that I say come from an American, a Southerner's perspective. You know what I'm talking about? We got fucking dinosaurs here. This is Dagobah. Pretty much. This is Dagobah. Like I said, like on even the path that we that goes that runs behind our house, the Sanford Bukaiba Trail that we walk on, there is like a little bitty. It's not really a swamp. It's more like a retention pond um, that you walk and there's like a little overlook and stuff. I've never seen an alligator in there, but yeah. I hear it. Yeah. Because they, they have a very distinctive uh, call, yeah. particularly the mother when she's yeah. like calling her babies. And so it's like something out of Predator. Yeah. So we like walk through there sometimes. I'm like, oh, yeah. there's mama. Yeah. She's calling the babies. And I always yeah. look, but I can't see her because she's yeah. hiding really good because there's like a lot of reeds and shit That's like right. that. What might work in these civilized in these civilized areas up north in Yankeeville and over there in the UK that just doesn't really work here. It's a it's a different reality on the ground. Well, like it's I said, a very the, different reality know, on the ground. The South is its own special, it's, its own animal, and yeah. I mean special in both the positive and the negative connotations. Home of Florida man. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. Normal reason. And Florida logic. man is a meme for a reason. <laughs> Normal logic and reason backfire here okay <laughs> everything is counterintuitive i mean a guy ate someone's face yeah. i mean for christ's sake it's like you know yeah. <laughs> any fucked up thing that happens right it's it happened here please. under okay if you were to compare this area between something in the eu or the uk this is a lawless tribal region compared to all that kind of stuff i mean shit happens i mean not where like where we live is not that bad yeah it's beautiful it's yeah just we that, live like it's in a really fucking like, beautiful here yeah but it's just, it's not operating under the same law, operating system as civilized world. I just, it, okay, look, there, what's happening here in, I'm going to tell you this, what's happening here in this area would be totally unacceptable in Boston. I lived in Boston for six years. This shit just wouldn't fly. It's flying here, flying just fucking I fine. I mean, it's, you know, it's not, it's not as bad as the hills have eyes. But yeah. I've been no, to some places of Flor- in Florida where... Yeah. I thought about that movie and thought, that could happen. The United States is not <laughs> one country. It's more like 50 countries in four different regions. They're all just watching the same. They have the same internet. They have the same kind of television, but <coughs> reality on the ground is not the same. No. It just isn't. But, you know, that, yeah. that's what keeps it interesting. It's because of the people. Right. <laughs> that's what right. keeps it interesting. That's what keeps this shit interesting. We have real <laughs> diversity here. Real diversity. Okay. Yeah. All right, so going back to World War II, and like I said, you know, people that didn't grow up in the UK or didn't grow up in Europe at the time of uh, the early parts of World War II, because obviously the US didn't get into it until a bit later on. But uh, from the beginning of World War II, obviously, particularly in London, they had uh, blackouts to keep from, you know, the Germans from bombing the cities. So what they would do is they would keep all the street lights out. They like painted all the windows black or like had heavy curtains over them and stuff like that so that at night you couldn't see the lights and you would get like heavy fines you would get arrested like if you had your lights on in your windows or anything like if anybody could see like where the cities were and shit like that so yeah so you could get like in big trouble um you for, for having lights on so there was a lot of shit going on at the time too and i think this happens you know pretty much everywhere like during wartime especially something that's like apocalyptic as world war ii was where you know, everyone is kind of, like, taking shelter and fucking, you know, tube stations and, like, cellars and all this other kind of shit. But also, people have gotten to a point where they feel like, well, I could die tomorrow. So, I think people almost have, like, a fuck it kind of mentality. So, you know, obviously prostitution goes way way up. Like, drinking goes way up. Partying goes way up, which you wouldn't think. But, you know, people were, like crowding dance halls and all this kind of, you know, going to hookers and all this other kind of shit because they thought I could be dead tomorrow. I might as well yeah. fucking enjoy it. Actually, myself. it makes a perfect sense. I it read, does. I, met a, I read a lot of books about American GIs who, most of them th- went through units that I served in like the 101st Airborne Division, what their experience were in World War II. Yeah. And in Germany, okay. One of the ones that I read was as the war started to end, German soldiers started to work alongside American soldiers as kind of basically police. Yeah. Okay? And this American soldier t- tells the stories of what this German soldier, who was a sergeant, told him, you know, while they were doing guard duty, man in a damn checkpoint over a road. And that German loved the war. He fucking loved it. He was stationed mostly in France and had a fucking blast 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Dated so many women and just said the nightclubs were through the fucking roof. Oh, yeah. So, war isn't what people think it is. I'm an ex-professional soldier, you know, and uh, civilians don't really have an idea of, of how much fun it is. A lot of PTSD guys, and I have PTSD, a lot of it involves with wanting to go back to the army. Yeah. You know what I mean? You miss it. Well, it's and a heightened. You're at a, a heightened, heightened sense of yeah, yeah, sense yeah. Of, so I can see that you, very much so. And there, there's a, a whole TED talk about PTSD and about a civilian reporter who served with uh, guys up on a mountain in, in uh, a place called Restrepo in, in in Afghanistan, and they got attacked the most. Okay, those guys saw a lot of combat. They had bad PTSD. But mostly what they wanted when it was over is to get back to their buddies and be back up on Restrepo. It's a very addictive. Because yeah. it's like doing meth. It's a lot I was like say, meth. It's, a, it's, a, it's being in a heightened emotional yeah. state all the time. And like when you come back and you have yeah. to get back into a quote unquote normal life. Right. And I think that's what happened too. Right. Like with a lot of the people that came back from World War II. This whole, this whole war is hell and veterans abhor violence. That's a World War One story. Those guys were drafted. They were sent to trenches filled with lice. They didn't really do much. They just sat out there. They weren't on that oh ragged edge. Oh my god! We watched that fucking documentary. Right. right. They shall not grow old. Holy crap! I mean, I knew that shit, but yeah. seeing it, that shit is horrifying. They weren't on that ragged edge of kill or be killed and getting ready to die. All right, they weren't doing that. Hemingway had it right. You give a bunch of fucking rifles to men and you send them out to hunt other men, they really kind of lose the taste for anything else. And that's really what PTSD is. Everybody I know that has it fucking misses the unit. They all want to get back into action. Yeah. You know? Well, fucking. like I said, you can see why it happened where, and particularly it happened like dudes coming back from World War II, and then they were supposed to go back into like this, you know, normal, like suburban 1950s it doesn't work. kind of life. Yeah. And you can see why a lot of them like just started fucking drinking yeah. and like they ended up dying really young Missis- because of that. In Mississippi, and I was a little kid, I, my, my, my uh, second cousin, or I think it was a second cousin, I, I was a little kid when I last saw him. He came back from the Pacific Island fighting, and you know, and he was uh, army, and he saw some fucking heavy action out on those islands. And he drank himself to death within about, you know, fifteen years of coming, twenty years of coming back. I yeah. guess a lot of a lot of you these know, guys I mean, did. That's all they did is just sit around, and think about fucking getting back on those islands and yeah. killing Japs. You know, that's how they fucking were. Yeah, it changes. Yeah, my grandfather dudes. was like that too. Yeah, yeah, he used the word Japs. Yeah, all so, the yeah, time. My granddad and fucking would drink an entire fifths of whiskey. My granddad didn't drink, but okay. other than that, it was the same. Died of cirrhosis of the liver by the time I was about six. Mine died of like emphysema. Yeah, yeah. So, same kind of thing. He pretty but, much smoked. I remember today. seeing him, and you know, and he was just badass. Yeah, you know, fucking total badass. Well, like I said, I think that's kind of where that whole thing comes from. It's like you know, you go there, you bond with all these guys, you see yeah. these horrible things, you're yeah. in this like emotionally heightened situation like pretty much 24-7. You and never everything come after down that is a letdown. And everything after that yeah. is just like boring. Yep. I can see that. It, that's yep. totally understandable. Yep. You see it in me. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And like I said, I can understand that. I understand yeah. that. Yeah. Well, once you fucking start living by the sword, you actually want to die by the sword. Yeah. You know, but it's just because it gets ingrained into you. Yeah. But, you know. I mean, and I don't know, like... I. I don't know if women really have it the same because, uh, you know, kind of our... We are is different, we are hormonally built for it. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. I, de- I definitely think it manifests itself differently. Yeah. You just never know love like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, I got guys on Facebook I served with and those are my fucking brothers. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we will die and kill for each other. Yeah. And they're all in government and law enforcement agencies now. You know what I mean? And that's where these guys are coming from. Yeah. Homeland Security, cops. So some of them are salesmen, you know. They're in, but they're just mentally. That's not where they are. Mentally, they're back in Korea with me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> or you know, Gulf, Gulf. You know, over in the Gulf. You know. But that's. There's a lot of you guys out there contacting me on Facebook in private. I know the deal. But yeah, so in a way, like coming at it from that context. It actually kind of surprises me that there wasn't more of this kind of shit going on. Right. Like people like taking advantage. 
I mean, yeah, there was like prostitution was a huge spike. That was you know drinking and all that other like general debauchery. Um, probably murder too, crime, and you know I think burglaries and shit like that went up. So there was like some of that, but I, I feel like this guy maybe was like the main you know, serial killer type to come out of this that was in this particular uh, context or took advantage of this particular context. So like I said, it's, you know... Man, the fucking... That storm is bad out there. An alligator is going to come through the fucking window in a big old fucking wave of water. We'll have to put him in the shower. (laughs) But yes, hopefully the power doesn't go out. Yeah, if we lose power, We're going to have to start all over. We'll start over. Actually, if it starts lightning, we might. If we lose the power, I think the computer and the camera will still keep on going, huh? Isn't it? Won't it start running off your battery? Yeah, but I'll probably have to stop. Like we'll just stop. So we'll just continue the show later. Yeah. All right. So, as I said, you know, so blackouts and everything like that. So into this, you know, sort of environment comes Gordon Cummins. Like I said, he's about twenty-eight years old at this time. He was in the RAF. Now, in early. Woo, yeah, you oh, saw it. Did, it, did we lose it? I don't know. Did we? No, it's still on. All right. Okay, we're back. Yeah, we got blown out. Of course, this is Dagobah like we were talking about before. And man, the storm was fucking bad. So Pretty we, much every afternoon in Florida. Yeah, so, yeah, during the summer. So what we did was we went ahead and saved what we did so we didn't lose it during the fucking yeah, lightning strike. Yeah, because I was like, it kind of Lightning went, was striking was right like, there. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> it's like, I'll be really yeah. sad if, like, my fucking computer... Blows out. While I thought. I thought. A, I thought a big old wave of water carrying alligators is gonna fucking start flushing through like that, that, that damn happen. movie. That could still happen. Happen at any mean, moment. That'd be a great it's, show. It's only July, man. It's like it's not even the height of hurricanes. That'd be a yet. great show. If fucking alligator washed in here, man. We get well, hits all around the world for the people. Me watching. fighting alligators. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Tom wrestles alligators. Got a buddy who's fighting alligators for a living, actually. Have you ever seen that picture of that one guy that I, just, I don't think it was in Florida? Well, maybe it was, but it was that one guy that got because it was like a photo that went around yeah. that was like a viral photo. Yeah. And it was like an alligator with like a man's hand like sticking out its yeah. mouth, and a lot of people thought it was photoshopped and stuff. No, it was but real. then they found no, it was real. It was yeah. like a guy. He was like a handler. Ed Dunham's got pictures of him fighting alligators. <laughs> that guy that used to be the bartender at Ibar, he's deal, dealing with a whole nest of alligators for a living. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot all about. He that. Does a whole alligator show. Yeah. He's a badass bartender, or not bartender, a uh, bouncer, too. I wouldn't fuck with alligators, yeah. but, you know. this Seriously, though, it's like, y- as long as you keep... Because they, they have a hard time, like, opening their mouth. Yeah, like, you can hold you, it shut. You can hold it shut with one hand. Now, once it's open and once your shit's in you, there, you can't get out then of you're in trouble. Because yeah. they'll just clamp it and break your limbs. Or yeah, they got a lot of force water. biting, but they don't have much but force they can't opening. Open it. Yeah. Just pro tip. So, it, well, if one's coming at you and his mouth closed, just fucking grab his fucking jaws and hold him shut. Also, I feel like a lot of people, and even people that have grown up in Florida, I, <laughs> he, I hear them talking about this, but they're always like, oh, you know, you can outrun an alligator on land. No, no you, you can't. No, you cannot. No, you can't. <laughs> they're very fast. They're fast. <laughs> they're they're very fast, fast for a short burst. Yeah. Uh, maybe about, you know, 15, 20 meters. They and just... <laughs> they can jump out of the water yeah. their whole entire body length. Yeah. So, if you're just hanging out in the water going, oh, we're looking alligator, they can jump out yeah. and get you. And that tail can fuck you up. Yeah, the tail is very big and very heavy, and if it yeah. swings it at you, Barbs it can, on it the can back break of your it. bones. Yeah. Pow! Yeah. So, like I said, don't fuck with alligators, you guys. Yeah. That's that's no joke. Yeah. And Back, you know, to, back to the story. What are, we, what are we doing now? We're talking about the Blackout Ripper, okay, Gordon yeah. Cummins. Yeah. And now, like I said, before we had our little power outage incident, <laughs> yeah. we were talking about... Ironically, well, no, what's not ironic? It was just like kind of that's actually the opposite of ironic. It was actually significantly. We were talking about the blackout in London, and then our kind of power went out because of the. Well, storm. it started to kind of brown out more yeah. than anything else, and, and we 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 lost uh, internet connection, so we thought we were going to lose power. We had to kind of jump out of the show for a little bit, and make save just in case. Just in case. That's about happened. what fifteen minutes ago. Yeah. Something yeah, like but storms caught. Yeah, uh, we just over. waited for the storm to blow over a little bit. Somebody, yeah. you still there are might big hear tropical some... storms. I mean, it just pours down buckets for only a few minutes, and might yeah. hear some thunder in the background right, still. Yeah. But the worst of it seems. Yeah, to be the lightning was striking right there in the back of the house. Yeah, so uh, we decided we should stop. But yeah, so we were talking about the blackouts in London and kind of the whole atmosphere uh, going on around London at the time. You know, with all the prostitutes and whatnot. So into this kind of seething cauldron of uncertainty, let's call it that. This is early February of 1942. Now, here's Gordon Cummins, who, like I said at the time, was 28 years old. And he was married. Like I said, he had a wife who was apparently happy with him, never complained about him as far as I know. 
he goes on Saturday, February 8th, he goes to... It's funny because some of the sources are that he goes to visit his wife. I'm like, he's visiting her? Don't they live together? Or maybe that's... I don't know. It's like... Well, he was in the army, right? Yeah. Oh, that's true. Okay. So, so he goes yeah. to visit his wife uh, for the sole purpose of, hey, can I borrow some money? Because I'm going to go out on the town. Right. Yeah. Go place. bang some hookers. <laughs> She's like, here, have some money. I don't know what's right. whatever. So, you know what I mean? That's, I'm, hey, you I'm want not, some r and R? I'm not judging. <laughs> whatever. This, that's how it works in their family, I guess. So she gave him some money. And he goes out on the town. Although, like I said, I probably shouldn't laugh because he's going out to fucking murder people. And that's, yeah. like, fucking not funny. So he goes out into uh, London's West End to have a good time. And it turns out that his good time, apparently, entailed killing somebody. Yeah. The following morning, the morning of February 9th, they found the body of 40-year-old Evelyn Hamilton. She was found in an air raid shelter near Marble Arch. Now, at first, they thought that it was just like a robbery gone wrong because she had had a handbag and it had about 80 pounds in it and it was missing. Right. She had been strangled. Um, her clothes were kind of like messed up, but she hadn't been sexually assaulted. Um, and she hadn't been mutilated either. Now, they weren't really sure if she'd been actually killed in the air raid shelter or if she'd been like killed in the street and then he dragged her down there and left her down there to like to hide the body or whatever. So police come on the scene. They think it's a robbery gone wrong. Um, pretty much the only thing, like I said, this is the early 1940s. They didn't have like a bunch of forensic science and all that kind of shit. Um, but they did determine that the killer was left-handed, which is kind of good because, you know, not a lot of people are left-handed. Now, only a couple of days later, actually, this was only like the next day because it was Monday, 10th of February. They found another dead woman. This was a 35-year-old woman named Evelyn Oatley. Now, she was found dead in her flat, which was in Soho. Now, she had actually... Now, a lot of women did this during wartime, uh, turned to prostitution, even married women and stuff like that, just to make extra money. And because I guess the market was out there, so, you know, what are you going to do? You try, Everything was rationed and everything was shitty, so I guess a lot of women right. figured, like, might as well. Um, she actually, when she was prostituting, uh, she went under the name Nita Ward, now, she had also... What were you going to say? I was going to say, well, I don't really think that was a thing in the UK, was it? Yes. It very yeah. much was a thing. It wasn't illegal, though, was it? No. That's it actually... I mean. uh, prostitution was not illegal until the 1950s, I believe. Maybe it's yeah. like our British listeners kind of pretty sure it was the 50s sometime. Yeah. That it yeah, was it, actually made illegal. At the time, street prostitution was not illegal. In yeah, that's what I was saying. It wasn't, it wasn't really a thing. I mean, they did it, but I mean that it wasn't a criminal thing. Right. They just did it. It was a thing in that it happened. Right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, street prostitution was actually, as far as I know, and like I said, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that street prostitution was still legal in the 40s. It wasn't made illegal until the 1950s. Yeah, and in the United States, it was kind of spotty. Certain states tolerated it, other states didn't. and it Yeah, really everything wasn't. kind of depends on... So even now, yeah. it's like, you know, the criminal penalties yeah. for it are harsher some places than others. Some yeah. places it's legal, like some places in Nevada, but only if you go to yeah. particular places. It's not. And they, they get around it now because they don't charge you for the sex. They just charge you for time. And Well, that's what all the ads now, like ways. escort yeah. services yeah. and massage parlors and stuff. It's like, yeah. th there's workarounds, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, street prostitution, as far as I know, is technically illegal everywhere but it just depends where you are like whether yeah some cities it just was never enforced yeah they just yeah like yeah. i said some cities they don't enforce it it just depends so evelyn oatley was also strangled now like i said she was found in her apartment so apparently gordon cummins had paid her uh, for her services and they'd gone back to her flat and he and he had killed her she had been strangled however after she was dead he also uh cut her throat uh she was found naked she had been mutilated, uh, most sources say sexually mutilated, with a can opener, which they also found at the scene that had blood all over it and fingerprints. Hmm. Um, yeah. So when they examined that, they found the fingerprints and the way that the crime was committed, the way the throat was slit and stuff like that, um, they determined again the killer was left-handed. Can so, opener? Yeah. How the hell do you... How do you, what did he do with the can opener again? Back this it up? It said sexually mutilated. With a can opener. Yeah. They must be talking Use about one of the kinds that was kind of like a wrench. Yeah, I have a picture. A yeah, I have a picture of it. Is that what they're talking about? Yeah, it's like it's like a long handle and like a curved, like a big, huge curved blade like that. Okay. And then like a littler. 
You know okay. what I mean? Almost like a little hammer and sickle kind of thing, okay, like yeah. bigger bit on the top. You know what I mean? Like an old. So school. it was. Yeah, it was a kind of. It was. A they kind didn't of a have can like the, you could the current hurt. ones. So it was yeah, a yeah, can yeah. opener you could hurt somebody with. It was basically like a knife, like Almost with two like little curved blades right. on it. Yeah, that's what it's it was. Like back, I said, I have a picture of the actual one. So. Back in Brazil, my maid could open a fucking... Because we had a maid but when I lived back in Brazil as a kid. Listen to this, M- yeah, Mr. Yeah, Money, Mr. Moneybags. Yeah, of course. Mr. Moneybags. Yeah, Money Me who grew up in a fucking trailer park. Yeah, no. I grew up <laughs> a fucking maid. That fucking prom king. Okay, but, well, you know, I lived in a lot of different places when I was a kid. I was moving between two parents, you know what I mean? Fucking my mother and father was a divorce my mother remarried a rich guy who ended up moving to brazil so it's you know in between mississippi brazil and california depending on what time it was no my maid could bring out a serrated steak knife just the kind that a person fucking opens you know and cuts a steak with here in the united States. yeah could take that steak knife and and open a can in about 10 seconds with that snake knife it that's, was amazing. I, I can do it that's now. That's pretty amazing. I can show you. I, I wasn't as good as she was. That's how she grew up. Her name was Sita. Grew up in the favelas, Sao Paulo. Yeah. I feel yeah, like... The favelas a, are fucking, you know, junk place. She could sit and go, See, I feel like if I tried to do that, I'd probably just end up slashing my Oh, man, she was badass. Because I'm super clumsy. She ended up dying later as a damn brain tumor. How old was she? Young. Oh, that's she awesome. died at about 32 of a brain tumor. Maybe. My uncle did too. He yeah. was 32 years old. He also yeah. died of a brain tumor. Did he? Okay, yeah. yeah. It hit her and we couldn't help her. You know what I mean? That's hard. We didn't have the money to help her. Yeah. She just died of a brain tumor. She slowly went insane and then died. Yikes. Yeah. That's horrifying. Yeah. So yeah, so again, can opener. So she was mutilated with a can opener. Um, police quickly also determined that this killer was also left-handed, so they imagined that it was probably the same guy, even though the first victim was not mutilated. But like I said, this almost seems like an escalation, very much like a Jack the Ripper type of thing going on. Because even Jack the Ripper's early victims, there was some mutilation, but not as much. And then, like, the last one was, like, he just cut her apart and, like, all her guts were everywhere. So that's kind of what happened in this situation also. Now, the next day... Like I said, this was only this was less than a week this shit happened while the fucking blackout and all the air raids and shit were going on. So the next day, Tuesday, February 11th. Now, there was another woman who had also been working as a prostitute. Her name was Margaret Lowe. Um, she was also known as Pearl. Her age is usually given as 42, 43, somewhere around there. She was also murdered in her own flat, which was in Gosfield Street. She had been strangled with a silk stocking of hers. Uh, mutilated, probably sexually mutilated. Although, like I said, a lot of the papers at the time wouldn't say stuff like that. They wouldn't even say raped. They would just say, like, criminally... Yeah, mashed. It, yeah, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's yeah. like they wouldn't even say it. Yeah. It's like people did it, but they wouldn't talk about it. I think maybe that might be some of the reason why some people have this, like, kind of glowing or more positive view yeah, of the about past. about how good the past was. Yeah, just because it's like this shit happened. It's like they didn't talk about it, though. Like, even in the newspaper reports... Yeah. They would use, like, all these euphemisms and yeah. stuff because they didn't want to say... They didn't want to be disrespectful. Yeah, they didn't want to, like, say, say exactly what it happened. They didn't want to be obscene. To these people. I mean, you know, that was the same thing in the South going way back. You know what I mean? They just wouldn't say exactly what happened. Which they is dumb because you... They were, being, they were being Christian about it. They were being Baptist about it. That's what fucks yeah. me up, though. It's like, oh, well, we can, we go, can do but... that kind of stuff, but we yeah. can't call it that. We right. can't talk about it. Yeah. That's super fucked up. Yeah, we so, have to minimize it. In certain ways, I think it helped, though, because it stopped things from spreading. Yeah, people maybe. Are, people are always talking about school shootings and mass murders in schools and shit nowadays. That was happening. It was happening back in the Actually, there were days. more of them back then. Yeah, it's just that they didn't talk about them. Yeah. And, and I think it, 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 it stopped kids from trying to emulate that. Well, if you don't hear about it, maybe you if you're a dummy, you, you, don't, don't think you won't about get it. that idea and you wouldn't think of the it. The FBI told them you know the news media says it's probably not a good good idea to talk about this because you'll just encourage more of it they were right but in the modern era it's impossible to control the news. like i said yeah. i think that cat's already that, out of that the bag cat's out of the bag point. it's like yeah. the barn doors open the You're horses right. have run out whatever right. old-timey farm metaphor you want to use right it's probably too late to do anything mass shootings go all the way back to the 1800s well yeah nothing like new said, 
like I said. Yeah. I think, Like I said, I think there were more of them, like, mm-hmm. back in the old days. But mm-hmm. you didn't hear about it as much. And, like I said, news yeah. wasn't, interna- like, immediately international. It was like all it lo- local. local. So in some ways, like it seems like it happens more now. Yeah. But it's just because you're hearing about it's it. It's less. Well, because you're hearing yeah. about one that might have happened in another country, whereas like before right. you wouldn't have heard about it because you didn't. You if read you the were paper to look at country. the United States and the population level, and then the amount of guns in here, you're, I'm amazed that it is as low as it is. It's it's very I'm kind of very too. rare. You have a lot of foreigners. Well, they have guns there. It must be deadly. No, not really. It's really not that it's bad. It's not really. It's I mean, there's places that I wouldn't go to exactly. by myself. And here's but the thing. That's true of it. They've talked about it on the internet where the crime happens in these cities. It actually goes along certain borders of the streets. Yeah. You can say it's this particular neighborhood. Yeah. That's doing it all. And I'm not saying well, that like every now yeah. and then. Because like I said, I've written about lots and lots of cases yeah. where... Shit was like nothing like this had ever happened here before, and it was yeah. just totally random. So I'm not saying it doesn't happen; it does. It does happen random, shit, but, but it's, it's very, very rare. Unlikely. It's very rare, and it, it's yeah. not like I'm not saying like you shouldn't worry about it because it, yeah, it could happen to you, you but it, the likelihood is very, very low. low. And when we've low. been in, we've been around major shootings. The fucking damn Pulse nightclub shooting happened just right up the street. We were there that night. That You're like we were only like a block. Or we two were like away a block from away from, from it. Happened. But that was fucking religion that was behind that. A lot of this shit is either religion. And drugs. 95% of all these fucking shootings here in the United States, drugs. Yeah. It's drug war. Yeah. And if you actually look at who's being shot, good riddance. Because it's just two groups of bad guys shooting at each other. Most of the time. They're yeah. bad on both sides, you know. So but yeah, it's just so- Darwin Awards, really. A lot of it is Darwinism. Well, like I said, a lot of it is criminal on criminal. Criminal on criminal. You know. But the, to me, that's the Darwin Award. So, yeah, so this woman gets murdered. Um, Like I said, she got strangled with a silk stocking. She was mutilated with a razor blade and a knife. And also, just to be extra assholey, he took a candlestick and stuffed it up her vagina. Her cooch. Yeah. Dickhead. He's a dick. Yeah. This man is trying to fucking... This man is trying to um, disgrace a woman post-mortem. Yeah. Ain't that some shit? Because pretty much most of the stuff, because all of them were strangled, yeah. But all of the mutilations, like the chop, all the chopping up and stuff he did, that was post mortem. Same yeah. as well, similar to Jack the Ripper. I would cut that man's head off. Well, he's already. Dead I would cut that man's head off. Now, interestingly, the pathologist that worked on this case, who was Bernard Spilsbury, who I guess he was like a really famous like pathologist at the time, or he worked on a lot of cases. Because on a lot of cases that I wrote about in my book, like especially like the one where like all the body parts were found in the trunk, like I think it happened in Brighton. Um, he was like the pathologist on that one too, because I was like, I was listening to a podcast about this. I'm like, oh, I know that guy. I've written about yeah. that guy before. He worked on a bunch of those fucked up cases back then. Oh, that poor guy. I don't know how he slept at night, but yeah, he saw all kind of shit. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, so he saw the mutilations and I, you know, I haven't seen photographs or anything. It's like just the vague description is bad enough, but, uh, he concluded that the murder was likely a quote unquote savage sexual maniac. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Understatement yeah. of the century. Yeah. Okay. Sad, um, so yeah, and at this point, they were pretty sure they weren't sure about the first one, you know, at this stage, but the second two, they were like, for sure, this is the same person. Plus, they only happened like within a day of each other. Now, the next day after that, so like I said, this guy is not wasting any time. It's like you know, there's a blackout. It's a week. Yeah. I'm just gonna go out. And He's fucking, got a job to do. I guess it yeah. like seemed like that, and like I said, it's like nobody had any fucking inkling of this shit beforehand. Yeah. I mean, he was 28 years old. He wasn't super... I mean, that's and young, he's on, but it's he's not on super He's on leave young. or he's on pass? I don't really know, honestly. He's trying to get it all in before he has to go back to, go guess, back to the army? It's like, what, this is on your bucket list? Is that like yeah. something you... Well, what the fuck, man? It's, it's like, probably on pass, and he's only got a limited amount of time. So he's Oh, just, I gotta kill all these I gotta women them before I go before, back. Gotta go back. Yeah, that's probably what it is. What the fuck, man? Yeah. I don't get it. Whatever. You dickhead. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, the next day which was Wednesday, February 12th, 1942. There was another one. Her name was Doris, and I'm not sure how her last name is pronounced. I think it's Juanne or Juanette. Um, different sources have given different ages. Some say she was 40. Some say she was 32. So we'll just say yeah, mid-30s, well, it's whatever. There. I know it is. When it's like, yeah. But they said she also went by the name Doris Robson. I don't know if she was a prostitute or if she just went by another neighbor. That was her maiden name or whatever. Um, she got murdered in 
uh, her ground floor flat in the Paddington district. Now she was married. Uh, her husband lived there as well. He was a hotel manager. Um, so I guess she was kind of like doing the prostitution thing on the side. I, her husband probably knew about it. I think a lot of dudes at the time did. So she would go to Leicester Square and she would pick up servicemen there like for money or whatever. So same kind of thing. She'd been strangled with a scarf and she was also sexually mutilated. Hmm. Now, the day after that, like I said, this dude is like not... This is like every fucking day. Bam, bam, bam. He's got a very short refractory period. I guess. He can get it up and it goes down. He's got to get it back up again. He's Yeah, he's a dickhead. Just like out of nowhere. This is just like a huge... This is crazy. I mean, like I said, you know, it's not... Because the media at the time was not as fucking saturated, especially with all this crime kind of stuff, there's no telling. Like, this guy might have done some, a bunch of shit like before this and got yeah. away with it because nobody suspected him. But probably, I'm just saying he, he didn't have any criminal record or anything like probably that. Probably what happened is you killed that first one. So he figured, oh, they're going to catch me. I don't I don't fucking have long. So I may as well do a whole bunch of other ones before they actually catch up to me. It does seem That's like that. probably what he's doing. It's probably like yeah, a fucking sign like he, of panic. Yeah, it he's seemed like, like oh, he's shit. like, oh, I only got limited time. I better. Yeah, they're going to get me. I better fucking keep going. I get going. some kind of quota. I got to right. fucking. I got to get some more in before they catch up to me. That's yeah. what he's doing. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah, so the next day... So he's probably very paranoid. He's probably fucking thinking that they're just one step behind him. Well, they were, like I said, they caught him yeah. immediately. So the next day, which was a Thursday, there was a woman named Mrs. Greta Haywood. And she was picked up by Gordon Cummins at a bar. Now, he asked her to go for a drink, and she said okay. But then he started making, like, a lot of, like, overt sexual advances, and she said no. And she, like, was kind of scared of him, so she ran off... And, you know, the streets, it's London, it's, everything's dark, like all the yeah. windows are blacked out and everything, and there's no street lights. So she runs off. Now he runs after her and catches up with her. And he catches her in, um, at St. Albans Street. He forces her into a doorway, like of a store or something, and he, like, grabs her by the throat and starts to strangle her. Now she actually collapsed. She got, she went unconscious. But then, like, a delivery guy, like, came around the corner, like, going on his rounds or whatever. And I guess, like, Gordon saw him and he was like, oh, shit, I'm going to get caught. So he just, like, took off. So she lived. Now, interestingly, though, at the scene, like a fucking dumbass, this blackout ripper left his gas, some sources say his gas mask or the box that his gas mask was in. And it had his name, rank, and serial number on it. <laughs> so, not the sharpest no, knife dumbass. in the drawer. He wasn't thinking ahead. Clearly. Yeah, but he was just, this Clearly. is all impulse. Yeah, this, like I said, this is definitely an impulse, yeah. disorganized killer. He right. doesn't sound, he wasn't stalking anybody. He was just, whoever was around, hey, there's he, a prostitute. I'm he just, wasn't planning on killing somebody. Sorry, he goes, I'm going to get this one. Yeah. That's what he's doing. Yeah. So, because Gordon Cummins, like a dumbass, as I said, left his fucking gas mask and or the box that the gas mask came in that had his name and shit on it. So, the police knew where to go looking for him. Now, before they even had a chance to do that, like, this was only, like, less than a day later, the motherfucker tries to attack another woman. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this was another prostitute. Her name was Catherine Mulcahy, also called Kathleen King. She was also attacked in her apartment, which was near Paddington Rail Station. Now, apparently, he gave her five pounds for her services, which is, I guess, what it was going for back then. She blew it. But, yes, but I guess, like, once he started getting violent, she wasn't having it. And I guess she, like... She still had her boots on because it was February and it was cold outside. So I guess, you know, her flat didn't have any heat or whatever. So she still had her boots on. He started getting, like, that way. And she fucking started kicking his ass. Right. And he threw her another five-pound note and ran the fuck out of there. (laughs) So I was like, that was just very, very funny to me. I'm like, man, you go, girl. It sounds like a man, of course, like I said before, running out of time. He thinks yeah. he's going to get caught, so he's just going to commit as many crimes as he can until they catch up with him. Yeah, like I said. So you're not talking about a fucking criminal mastermind here. Clearly. No. N- uh, neither of these guys were. No, had he done <laughs> one crime and then just vanished and stopped? Well, yeah, they never would have caught him. Because, right. you know, like I said, in the, particularly in the 30s and the 40s in the right. wartime period particularly, there was a lot of these kind of like weird one-off yeah. crimes. It's like, hey, I killed a girl and cut her up and left her in a trunk somewhere, and nobody ever caught the never dude got that the did dude. that. 
He could have just done it once and then backed off for four or five months and let the fucking cops, you know, let let them get their guard down. They could have done it again. Yeah. And they may have not even realized it was the same guy. Well, yeah, shit, even Jack the Ripper, like, spaced the shit out. Yeah. This guy was just, like, every day. It's like, hey, I'm going to go kill another one. Mm -hmm. What the hell? I don't know what you were thinking, Jordan. But anyway. that just pours the pressure on the cops to find the guy. But like I said, they found him pretty much. Man, like I said, they were lucky, too, because this guy was kind of an idiot. But also, uh, okay, so... They um, had the shit with his name on it. So obviously they went to the thing and they were like, hey, Gordon Cummins. And he's like, oh, well, no, because I have an alibi. Because look, you know, when you're in the RAF or whatever, every time you go out on leave, you have to like sign in and out, right? So he's like, look, I signed back in before midnight, like every night that those women were killed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which at first you would think was like, that's a pretty rock solid alibi, right? It's like, you know, he signed in, he was here, everybody saw him, blah, blah, blah. But then as the police investigated, they discovered that it was pretty common practice for a lot of the guys in the little thing there to just like sign each other in and out. Cause people were like, Hey, can you just like sign in for me? Cause I don't want to get in trouble. I'm going to do this, that and the other. So they were always like signing each other in. Right. So it turned out that on one particular night in question, you know, when one of the women was killed that after he had signed in or had somebody signed him in, then somebody saw him and another guy leaving, like like sneaking out of fucking fire escape later on. Yeah. So he was obviously like either having someone else sign him back in or signing in and then sneaking back out. So that's what that what was mm. going on there. So finally they're like, all right, whatever, motherfucker. So they caught him and they searched him and they found a in the pocket of his shirt or his jacket or whatever they found a cigarette case belonging to one of his victims uh he they also found a fountain pen which belonged to one of his other victims and when they took fingerprints it matched fingerprints that they found in two of the flats like two of the murder scenes Hmm. his fingerprints also matched the bloody fingerprints that were found on the can opener that was found to mutilate one of the that was had Hmm. been used to mutilate one of the victims also and as I said, this guy, you know, no criminal history, nothing of any, like not even petty crimes. Because usually this type of stuff, you know, right. start out as like petty criminals. But he, as far as I know, There's he didn't have any criminal. Something building up in him and it burst I out. I guess tried so. To be, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. But like I said, so, you know, he did these crimes like in the early part of February. February 16th, he was arrested. Hmm. So, you know, as they found his fingerprints at three of the crime scenes and also had the gas mask, bas- mask with his name on it and all that other kind of crap. So clearly they put him on fucking trial in April of that year. Now, they only put him on trial for one murder, that of Evelyn Oatley, because they figured that if he got acquitted of that, then they could immediately like do another one. You know right. what I mean? Because they said if we do all of them and it doesn't go through, then he might go free. So want to make sure they let's do one at yeah. a time just in case. Right. But... Even though it was only one crime, uh, I believe that the jury only took about half an hour. And they were like, yeah, hang that motherfucker. Right, yeah. So, uh, yeah, they did. They sentenced him to death by hanging. And like I said, he had done the murders in February. They arrested him February 16th. He was put on trial on April 27th. And on the 25th of June, they hanged his ass. So what did he say? At Wandsworth Prison. Yeah. Well, during an air raid, as so, a matter of fact. So, what kind of guy are we talking about? What did he say about all this? Not a lot, actually. It yeah. just—it really didn't seem like he had much of an excuse. It didn't really seem like... Who, who knows? And like I said, he did, like, mutilations and yeah. shit, too. Who was he? I mean, what did he look like? What was the deal with this guy? Just a normal-looking dude. He was a normal-looking yeah. dude. Nobody knows much about him, though. Nah. There wasn't, like, a lot about his, you know, younger life or anything like that. It's just yeah. he seemed like a regular dude. He was married. What did like, he say? I mean, what was his explanation? Did he even give an explanation? I don't like, think he did. Well, honestly. I had to kill a bitch. I mean, what, what did he say? He no. didn't even say nothing. Not as far as I know. Not that I could find. Damn. So, he just seemed like this type of dude. Now, from what I remember from the movies that I saw, he was just kind of like a fake snot. You know, yeah, he did kind of have that like putting fix. on airs type of personality, yeah. sure. Yeah, now, to our British listeners, fucking the worst thing you could ever call a motherfucker here in the United States is a fucking snotty. Well, I don't know. I could think of a lot of Well, there's a lot of those, but a snot <laughs> is just a fucking snot. You know what I mean? They're not, they're, they're, they're you slap a, you slap a snot around in the United <laughs> States. But, uh, no, he's just kind of a fucking dude that thought he was something, but there really wasn't much to him, and he was kind of a... Yeah, I remember he wasn't a bad-looking guy. No, he was just, like I said, he was a totally yeah. normal, good-looking and dude. He was trying to... He thought he was Errol Flynn, running around fucking killing bitches. Or something. something. Like I said, maybe he just thought 
in all this wartime shit, he's like, I'm just, I'm yeah. going to be Jack the Ripper. He decided he was going to cosplay as Jack the Ripper. Yeah. That was like, like I said, that was like his life goal. I don't yeah. know. Dude, I guarantee you, dude was a loser. He's a pathological liar. Well, they are liars. He felt that he didn't measure up to his own expectations, and this is this is how he was going to compensate in some way. Um, I don't want to pecker check this motherfucker, but I guarantee he was a little dick bitch. I don't guarantee he was a little dick motherfucker. Well, like I said, aren't they all? And I I ain't hate not a little dick motherfucker. I know some little dick motherfuckers that are cool dudes. It's just that (laughs) sometimes a little dick motherfucker wants to, you know what I mean, blow himself into something that he isn't. Little dick combined with some some overcompensation. Trying to overcompensate in ways Mm -hmm. that are not healthy. Yeah. If you're a little dick motherfucker, you better be charming. Yeah, be just like develop some other attributes. Become rich. That will make you more attractive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, you know, make money, right. be funny, you know, be right. charming or right. something. Exactly. You know what I mean? Just have something else exactly. to offer. Plenty of successful little dick motherfuckers out there. Yeah, of course. They're out there. Dick size is really not... I think men yeah. think it's more important than women do. It is, and, and we know one of them. We know one of them, and I ain't going <laughs> to name him, but he, he compensated by uh, becoming very physically fit, and I don't think it actually really worked. Uh, <laughs> so you're just like shooting your whole argument. He was <laughs> trying to do it, but he, he, he was defeating himself over it, making it into something that it wasn't. Like you know, I said, I feel like, like a, dudes have like a real problem with this because yeah. I feel like they they have like a real sense of inadequacy. They think about it's it. more important when it's than not it really as is. important as yeah. I mean to women, to most women anyway. Most women. I ain't gonna name a dude's name, but he's a good-looking guy. He's an older guy. He's extremely physically fit. And he's a little dick motherfucker, and he won't, he can't get over it. So anytime something doesn't go right with some girl, he blames it on that. Yeah. And and that's not what it is, dude. It's just that you're a downer. Well. And you can't get over the shit. I think it. This kind of happens a lot in yeah. you know your kind of incel type communities and stuff yeah. like that because I feel like dudes, they have a thing where they never want to like. They're not introspective like mm. these type of dudes. They don't want to like look at themselves. Go, what can I do to be better? You know, maybe I'm right. a jerk. Maybe I come right. on too strongly. Maybe this that. They're gonna like, blame something else on. Like that. I feel like, and this is a very generalized statement. So please don't like take this as like, oh, men do this, m- women do that. But in a general way, women tend to internalize their problems. Like they feel like uh, if something goes wrong, it's my fault. So we're much more introspective in that way. It's yeah. like, what did I do wrong? Whereas dudes will blame someone else. Yeah. You know what I mean? In general. Not, you know, yeah. not everybody's like that. But in, in general, that that's I've found that that's the case. There are little dick motherfuckers out there getting a shit ton of women. That's what I mean. And then it's there like, are big dick motherfuckers out there that could, women just, wouldn't touch them. Yeah, I it's mean, just, just like, it's, 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 it's just like it's, anything else. And like, yeah. I feel like, like I said, there's a lot of this in the incel community. Oh, you have to have this perfect bone structure. You have to have money. You have something like nah. that. It's like, that's really not the case. It's ri- Women are actually a lot more forgiving. I mean, most women are. It's like, yeah, there are some certain like, you know, bitchy shallow women, just like there's bitchy shallow men. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like, but those people, you don't want to hang out with them yeah. anyway. It's like most people are very, yeah. and most women in particular are very forgiving. If you have yeah. something to offer, like I said, like, be funny, be charming, be if loving, you were, be if affectionate, you were, be something. If you were to actually look at it by the book, I'm too short, but I've never had a problem with women. Never. He never has. That's never. It. And because some you of these don't women, make an issue of it. And, and some of these women that I went out with in my past were six footers, big old tall women. Yeah. And in my experience, being a shorter guy, I'm only 5'6", the taller a woman was, the easier it was to get with that. Because tall women have a hard time They have dating. a hard time. And in fact, I if think she tall was, women yeah, might have a worse time than shorter I think dudes. so. If she was tall and good looking, I was right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Tall, Easy. Yeah. Easy. Just treat her like a fucking person. And have a good I'm time. I'm not sure why that's and so just, hard for people to yeah. get. <laughs> and, and, and tell her she's tall and fuck, tall and beautiful. You know what I mean? And they just suck like right I into said, it. Like I said, I mean, anybody, everybody wants to be appreciated for what they are. Yeah. Everybody wants to be loved for yeah. what they are. That's yeah. all you have to do. You just have to offer that. Yeah. When I was when I was in high school, when I was living, when I was out in Brazil in an international school, there was, I went out with a girl who was big old tall girl from Sweden. She must have been six foot one, six foot two. Beautiful. It was like having sex with a horse, but beautiful. 
That's a weird. Hand me that. <laughs> hand me that. She'd bend. Uh, she bend on over. I said, "Hand me that stool." I had to get up fucking higher. I had to get up on the. Stool. I had to get up on the stool to reach the shit. <laughs> I felt like she. She probably felt like she was having sex with a Chihuahua, but <laughs> it shit was. The shit was magic. The shit was magic. You just gotta make if it. If you're work. out there, please let me know if that's it. it was just gotta like, fucking make like it. Hilarious. Just gotta. <laughs> You just gotta Those, accept things for how it how they are. I'm just are. having that mental picture. And it's they just me gotta have. You just gotta accept things for how they are. You know what I mean? People well, are different. Everybody. That's the thing. People, People are, are different. different. Everybody yeah. has strengths and weak weaknesses. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is yeah. discover what you're good at and just roll and with emphasize that. Emphasize it. Just roll with that. Have fun. Discover Be what you're bad at. Minimize that. The the that's all. To, if you if I got any incels out there, you know what I mean. Look, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell you something. The number one way to get up a woman's skirt is to talk your way up it, and you better be fucking funny. If you're fucking funny and you're cool to her, you, you just like I said, just, just treat her is. like a person. Just like like, a person. Just fucking like funny. the problem right. I think with a lot of these type of dudes is that they don't know how to act. All they do, yeah, it's like they just they think everything is the women's fault. Oh well, yeah, women yeah, just yeah. want good looking or big dick or rich or yeah. whatever. But I'm like, no, it's just because you're an asshole and the fact that you don't realize that is putting people off yeah yeah the, i'll click on over to some of these incel migtow videos and i'm gonna say migtow is men going your own yeah, going yeah. their own way in a case lot of these guys know. are nice don't look that side up it's a, lo so a lot depressing. of them are nice guys they're just very misguided and if you ask me inexperienced and they're they're um stereotyping women and, yeah, and, and, and we're and, not a hive mind. No, for yeah, real. they're stereotyping women, and nah. they're doing this because they don't know women. Yeah, and the reason why they don't know women is because they're approaching it as if they're trying to climb Mount Everest. It doesn't yeah. take a fucking rocket scientist. No, be yourself and just have fucking fun. These are people. Well, like, like I said, I think the problem too. A lot of the problem too is that a lot of their approach is "quote unquote" goal oriented, mm. and women don't like that. Mm. It's like women don't like to be. They approached. see right through that. Yeah, it's like we're not dumb. Okay, they see right it's like that. we can see you coming at us like, "Hey, I want to fuck you," and it's like that's very right. off-putting. My whole life, I've been off-putting. My, my whole life, I've been very popular with women. I got the pictures to prove it. <laughs> Jenny <laughs> knows. But I've been very popular with women, but it's because I didn't make a big deal out of it. And when, when well, it's not just women you've dated. It's you, like you have you friends. Can, I got yeah. Women you have a probably equal amount, and yeah. like I have an equal amount male female friends. So yeah. do you. It's like you have an equal amount because you see you approach people as yeah. people instead of like yeah. man woman. Listen, li you just listen to them. Yeah. Fucking learn how to talk. Be honest, and fucking you know let people know who you are. Even if you're a bad person, you tell me I'm having this problem. It works out. Yeah. It works out. I think the thing, like I said, don't pretend to be something don't you're not. Don't pretend to be you're not, right. Because that's something that a lot of people pick up on. It comes off, off as creepy. Yeah. Um, you know, just kind of be yourself and don't don't blame other people if, right. for your misfortunes. It's like and there's shit you have to work on. It's no. like everybody's got weaknesses. And, and, you got to work on it. And don't be, don't be goal-oriented. I've been out with fucking women that look like supermodels and other ones that were just ugly ducklings. That was, I had a good time on either side. Because I was looking at them as people, not so much. Some of these women that are absolutely gorgeous, they're fucking as people. They're 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 not all that. Well, yeah, it, it, and it, that's it's, you know. It, when you first might score that, you're like, oh man, this chick's awesome. Man, I'm having a good time. That wears off really quick. The way someone looks, kind of wears off. You know, uh, Jenny saw that happen before before me and you were going out. Yeah. I was going out with a hottie. She was a Disney princess. Yeah. That shit wore off fucking quick. Very quick. Very fucking quick. <laughs> I remember like that. Like four or five days. Yeah. I'm like, this, this bitch fucking crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, uh, you know. And I've told you the same thing. It's like, yeah. even from the female perspective, like... And I know this is weird to say, and I don't know if a lot of people will get this. Because I, I know dudes are more visually oriented yeah, in general. Yeah, we're visual. Very visual. Um, I'm not all that visually oriented. Women just are. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just in not in the same way. Not in the same way. Though. Um, So even if somebody goes, oh, hey, look at that hot guy over there. Look at his bot or whatever. It's like... I know this is funny, but I've told a lot my, of hot dudes I've told, are dicks. Well, yeah, and I've told my friends this too. I'm like, I don't yeah. know if he's hot or not because I don't know him. Right. A I lot don't of hot dudes are dicks, and I'm going to tell you, almost all the really hot women are fucking 
Well, that there is there is some truth, and and yeah. I'm not going to generalize because, like I said, I've been friends with some yeah. very very super hot girls that were yeah. super super nice. Uh, yeah, and there, some, there are a few. Yeah, and I've been friends with like yeah. you know some not so attractive girls who were also crazy. Uh, or... Laura, Laura, you know Laura, Laura Ross, no relation to me. Great looking woman, super fucking good soul to her. Yeah. You know what I mean? But there are other women that fucking look as good as her. They're fucking garbage. And like I said, you just, Gar- that's why you I mean, can't tell. that's what I mean. You can't tell. And yeah. like I said, there's there's no like recipe for like, oh, yeah. they're good looking, so it must be a dick or they're good looking, so it must be. There's no way of knowing. No. And that's why I said, that's why I have this metric where it's like, I can't tell if anyone's hot or not because I don't know them until I know you as a person. The more I know you, if you're a cool person, then you become more attractive. Mm. That's how that works. I mean, you know, because I... Because I've gone out with dudes before, too, that were yeah. like, you know, people might look at them and be like, oh, you know, they're not that great looking or they're just average looking or whatever. Yeah. But they had something else that it, was attractive. In general, looks kind of wears off. That's what I mean. I mean and everybody a gets lot more to it. Everybody yeah. gets old. Everybody yeah. gets, you know, fat and diseased and stuff like that. It happens yeah. to everyone. So that's something that's very fleeting and well, you can't base a whole thing on that well not only that a person can still be good looking and you get sick of them and because it's not be, there yeah it's because just you're just yeah because right. if you're not a good person or you don't yeah, have the, anything in common with them you or, could be as you could be a 10 and you're still going to drop down to about a two and this is something a lot of these dudes like you know i i'm in i'm into fitness i like to fucking work out and shit there's a lot of dudes that work out because they're overcompensating for other things and they still can't fucking hook up with a woman because they haven't figured that out yeah. yet. You know what I mean? That women are not very visual. Well, and because you know, they, they like think, the oh, well, package. I did all this, but they still yeah, don't, they still don't like, yeah, like me. Well, but you're working on something that a lot of women really aren't that interested in. It's got to be a mixture of everything. Yeah. It's got to be full spectrum. Or, like I said, you have to at least... And right. I think... Conf- like. I think there's too, there's kind of this misconception where a lot of people say like, oh, girls like assholes. That's not the case. No. Um, women like... They like bad boys, but a bad boy is like an asshole. They like confidence. They like confidence. Yeah. Right. They don't want somebody that's always like right. questioning themselves or is down on themselves. It's right. like nobody wants to hang out with somebody that's always like down on themselves. Yeah, I don't want to go out with schlep rock. And you guys or might be old. Well, I don't want to hang out with chicks like that either. Yeah, I right. mean, it's like, like I said, you know, women are more forgiving of that right. kind of stuff because we can kind of like, you know, uh, you know, kind of cry into each other's beer or whatever about, yeah. you know, problems. Yeah. And that's fine. But I'm just saying nobody wants to be around someone that's a fucking no. downer all the time. It's always no. like, oh, I suck so much. It's like, who the fuck wants to hang out no. with us? So, you know, you want somebody that's like fun or funny or it's like you know yeah. that you have a good time with or you feel good when you're with exactly. that person that's that's it it's, take it's it really f- as simple as that take it take it we're f- old we're giving you advice yeah. Yeah, we're, 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 we might have a younger audience you know i want to take this shit from um uh the greatest porn star of all time ron jeremy ron, <laughs> ron jeremy oh, ron. talking about women he says the best looking women in the world don't mean shit if they're not into it See, that, yeah, he was mostly in the, he was mostly into a woman's vibe, you know what I mean? Fucking, so, I am as well. I mean, yeah, yeah I'm very really, much into people's vibe. Into what their vibe was. If they were if they were happy to be there and they were you know fucking entertaining, it does get to a point to where you become an old veteran of cock mastery, to where the fucking visual part is only just one little aspect of it. The rest of it is it's more of like the vibe. Well, do you know, I mean, do you know who I like? I mean, you know this probably, but what, one of the favorite, one of my favorite like female porn performers yeah. is Belladonna. Yeah, yeah, because she's not, into it. <laughs> she's not a beautiful girl. I mean, she's yeah. a pretty girl, you know. Yeah. She she has the, like, the gap she's in her teeth and stuff by like the way. that. Yeah, she's, yeah, yeah, she's a cute girl. Yeah. But the reason I liked her was because you could tell she was having a really good time. She was happy to be there. She was happy to be there. Yeah, right, You don't right. want, nobody wants to, and particularly women don't. Yeah. We particularly do not want to watch porn where it looks like the woman's like yep yeah okay you're looking Super at her watch fun. get the fuck out of here yeah can i get my check now please mm. it's like you know you can feel that vibe it's like it's not so fun now bella donna was fucking happy to yeah be there. she loved that shit yeah, yeah. and she had her own production company she has yeah, her own yeah. toys and everything like that so that really comes through and i think she must have been like, saving up for them productions she's yeah. like going on dry like a dry <laughs> she's like i got Probably. something i gotta make a film in about five days i'm gonna do that i'm just gonna so let she's it, just gonna, it's like a fast but you know what i mean it's like some religious fast exactly Holy right. crap! We're going to well, how do we get from like serial killers to porn? This is that's like the nature of this, this show. This is the most messed up show This is the nature ever. of the Sorry, fucking guys. thirteen o'clock show. 
<laughs> this is a show more than anything else. It's a show. It's a show. It's, it's a the greatest show on earth. Show. That's what it is. Well, all we need it's is a, some it's fucking, an educational experience. All we need is a ringmaster and some elephants. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, we need to uh, take, a break. take a break right now, and then when we come back, we will do the second half of the show. We're talking about another motherfucker just like this, except same time period, but on a different continent, but same kind of deal, like taking advantage of wartime conditions to do this fucking horrible shit that they're doing. That would be the brownout strangler, uh, Eddie Leonsky. So we will talk about him after the break, and we will be back in just a minute. Got baby cookie a little chew toy that has mint in it and she loves that shit she's like rubbing it all over her face <laughs> yeah oh it's good <laughs> get it pookie get it yeah <laughs> All right, we're back on the second half of our show talking about wartime, darkness, yeah. murderers. Yeah, we're back for the second half, and we already just got a request to do a movie retrospective on Roadhouse. We definitely need to do that. I would that. definitely do a retrospective on Roadhouse. I, I want to get that bitch Roadhouse. on Blu-ray, though. How can you not love Roadhouse? It's so lovable. I got to get Roadhouse on Blu-ray, and I got to get Lionheart on Blu-ray with fucking Von Da, Lionheart, Kickboxer. I want to yeah. get that well, on Blu-ray, yeah. too. Yeah. Some of those older classics there. I mean, I got a lot of oh, I got a lot of other old classics that I like. You know, fucking Steven Seagal movie. Wonderful man. He's a fucking <laughs> wonderful man. He's, a, he's an awesome. <laughs> but yeah, I like that old shit, man. That shit was so cheesy. This shit was good though. There's something kind of sublime about Roadhouse, though, because yeah. I mean, and I'm saying this is like you know anybody that's a regular watcher of the show, you know, like a huge huge mystery science theater dork i've seen yeah. every single episode at least 20 times yeah. and mike nelson of mst3k is famously a huge fan of roadhouse and they made so so many like fucking references to it on it was, the show it was the very end of the mullet era there's just something so delightful yeah. about it it's it's a bad yeah. movie but in a way that's like like i said it's like a sublime the, yeah. You know, there's a, there's like this little gap in between that's like, right. this is a shitty movie and this is like a super awesome movie. And then there's like this little... Speaking of shitty movies, if you look on Facebook and go, Tom, shitty movies. With I two have D's. Shitty, with the two D's. <laughs> I have a, uh, I have a, uh, I have a show there on Facebook. We call it, I have a Facebook group. Yeah, and it's not ahead. a show. It's, it's a... not a show, but we, we talk about this kind of shit and we laugh about stuff. So if you look, look look up on Facebook, Tom Shitty Movies, and if I accept you, I'll let you in. And okay. you know what's kind of interesting, speaking of Mystery yeah. Science Theater, and you wouldn't think this, and this only came, this was only discovered by me today, yeah. when I was researching this case that we're talking about, the Brownout Strangler, Eddie Leonsky, 
there is an MST3K connection here. Mm-hmm. I'm going to save that till the end. That'll be a surprise. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was just surprised too. And I'm like, no fucking way. I said it out yeah. loud by myself. But yeah, while I was reading about this case. Okay, Roadhouse. We're going to do Roadhouse. <laughs> we'll do Roadhouse. I want to do Roadhouse. I want to do Lionheart. I want to do Kickboxer. Uh, we're going to do some of the uh, fucking like Marked for Death and some of the old fucking Seagal movies, too. That shit's fucking hilarious. Only the old Cause ones, I, though. Cause his the only new old ones. ones. His yeah. new ones are like, I mean, I'm not saying his old ones aren't self-important, but his new ones are very self-important. The, the he new clearly ones, has a much higher opinion of himself than anyone else on Earth, even his mother. Seagal's newer movies are very generic, if you ask me. You yeah. kind of blow through them, you're like, what the fuck am I... He's what smug and it? I hate smug. Yeah, you're like, what the fuck is this? You know what I mean? And it's... The older ones were actually kind of presented as if they were real movies. <laughs> so, I so like as, it, as if they, as were, if real they were real movies. movies. So there's something to them that was, I mean, he did do some good ones. I'm just going to tell you. There were a couple good The Under sure. Siege movies, I liked them. One and two. I liked them. I thought they were hilarious. Yeah. yeah I was yeah, entertained. I liked them. They're, I think they're very good. They're not good movies, but they're no, entertaining movies. they are what they are. Yeah. <laughs> you had Tommy Lee Jones fucking being over the top as a fuck. And He's you, good in everything. And you have fucking old, what's his name, fucking uh, crazy blonde haired guy from... Uh, There's a lot of those. Oh, shit. Was it the guy with the teeth? The guy with the teeth. What's his name? Be- Busey. Yeah, Gary Busey. Gar- G- yeah. Wait, yeah. was it Gary Busey or Jake Busey? Gary. Okay. Gary's the dad. Jake the dad. The yeah, Gary They Busey. both have the... Teeth, though. Let me tell you something. Gary Boosie act his ass off. When you, he showed up in your movie, you were going to get a movie. Well, he's kind of like... Well, yeah, you He's kind of like Nicolas Cage in the exactly. way that it's like, even if the movie sucks, when he, you see him, you're like, all right, he, we're all right now. Yeah, we're all Bo- right now. Boosie this never dialed that shit in. He was going to give you a performance. That's what I mean. So I fucking and Nicolas Cage does that, too. It's like, yeah. I love dudes. It's like, yeah. even like as shitty as the movie is, it's like... Hey, will you be yeah. in my like nephew's wedding video? Mm-hmm. And they turn up and they just like give it their all, man. Yeah, I yeah, respect make the that. whole fucking movie. I respect that. Yeah. Even if they chew the scenery, even this like yeah. just entertain me, man. Yeah. I don't care. But Under Siege One was fucking a classic. A I love Gary fucking Busey. classic, and it had titties. Okay. Titties that pop up out of a cake before you even didn't expect it. That's the only scene that I remember from that. Titties movie. popping up out of cake. A girl was beautiful. <laughs> the old titties. Okay. Was the was the titties? Yeah, 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 yeah. Out. Well, it wasn't just titties. It was it was an entire Everything. woman with titties you, you attached. With titties on it. Yeah. Who popped? She out was of a cake. cute too through the whole movie. You had, you had fucking Seagal act to try to act like a real man, even though he run like a bitch. The dude well, like ran I said, like he was trying bitch. to be a Cajun. That yeah. was the only other thing. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Movie. With the fake Cajun accent. I was going to say, speaking of Gary Busey, for the retrospective, we should definitely do um silver bullet one of these days. okay we can do silver bullet yeah another stephen definitely. king because we just did yeah. christine and i haven't I seen that like, one in a long time oh, silver bullet's good that's like that's yeah. another kind of underrated okay we'll go look at that like it's not scary or anything but it's we'll like look at it. it's entertaining we'll though. look at it yeah and that was like published i remember it being published as like a graphic novel like another one i want to revisit is lost boys i haven't seen that in forever. how can you not like lost boys man i haven't seen it forever I saw it back in the day. Well, yeah, I saw it when it came out in So I want to see how theater. that's aged. I want to see how that's It's aged. still good. I saw it about it? a year ago, a okay. year and a half we're gonna, ago. We're going to take a look at that one. It's still good. I mean, I liked it just as much, okay. but maybe that's just going to mold. I don't okay. know. Okay, on to the next case. Let's go All right, so it. now, as I said, now in the earlier part of the show, we were talking about fucking Gordon Cummins, the so-called Blackout Ripper, who, for whatever reason, decided, hey, everyone's, like, windows are blacked out and all the streetlights are out, so I'm going to just go cut up a bunch of women over a week period for whatever reason. Now, as I said, I'm kind of shocked that this didn't happen more often. However, I didn't even know this, but it did happen. The only reason I found out about this guy was because this guy is linked at the bottom of the Wikipedia article for the first guy. Mm, (laughs) And I was like brownout strangler it's like who's that because you know at the bottom of wikipedia sometimes they're like see also like this related brown topic brown it's kind of like brown note it's like I know. it's like something that happens in your shorts it's a <laughs> it's such a it's like i wish they had come up with something better like a better yeah. term for that like i see how they did that it's like oh it's a blackout because all the lights are out but it's a brownout because only brownout. some of the lights are it out it was from it was from a more civilized it should have been like navy so blue yeah. out <laughs> <laughs> or something or gray out why not gray out they're just doing what they're gonna do because brown really it's like yeah. ugh. okay, okay. Man, man. but yeah so th- that's the only reason i knew about this guy even though as i found out later there was like a movie made about him and everything like that so this guy was called the brownout strangler 
I'm sorry. It's like every time I say it, he's going to cackle like <laughs> Davis and Butthead over there. <laughs> Brown out. <Yeah. laughs> this, uh, this, guy's this, is is... Gen, this is X-Gen humor. What we're talking well, about like is Well, like I said, I feel like a lot of younger people are... They don't know what we're talking about. Look how fucking about. popular Stranger Things is, man. No, no. That's like every single thing. I was yeah. like, oh, look, they're referencing Fast Times at Richmond High. Oh, yeah. look, they're referencing Gremlins. For oh, you look, they're... millennials, you, got, you guys are fucking idealistic. We're X-Gen, okay? We didn't have these same ideals. There's a big correlation between millennials and boomers, okay? But we're X-Gen, and X-Gen's more... We hate like, everybody. We're kind of like Zoomers. The new Zoomers are actually kind of more like us. They're like, they laugh at shit. They don't like think I said, we hate everybody. We're more like a Zoomer, right? Because, I mean, well, I think they even, like, pegged us as that at the time, like, as being, like, super cynical and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. But that's true. Yeah. Because so we knew, I, I we actually knew don't they mind were, that. We knew they were lying to us. I don't, I don't okay. mind that uh, stereotype, because in my case, that's entirely... That's we entirely knew true. they were lying to us. I hate everybody, and I'm cynical. We didn't everybody. fucking believe what they were talking but about. But then, in a way, like, I hate everybody, and I hate everything, but I'm also, like, kind of, like, weirdly optimistic at the same well, time. Well, you see, that releases your ability to love everything, because you know it's all fake anyway. You're just like, yeah, just take it for what it that's is. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. So I can, right. like, kind of, like... In a way, I feel like I can love things on their own level. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, I know this is fake, but I love it. Yeah, yeah. Well, like we were talking about before, like, I think on our, um, and actually, wait, how are we recording this? I'm not really sure. But when on one of our movie reviews, we were talking about how much I loved Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Yeah, we know That fucking fake. movie. And, um, and, you know what I mean? And I was like, look, objectively, I know that that's a terrible movie. And yeah. yet, somehow, like, I still love it, and I yeah. don't care. That's like, it's not even yeah. a guilty pleasure, because I'm not guilty about it. Yeah. I just love it, so... Love hate that all, fucking stupid hate all you shit want. unironically. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's not even ironic. Not even I love ironic. that movie. Nope. I love that movie. Yeah. I love the fucking pirate movie, mm-hmm. which was like the shitty, like Christy McNichol was in it. Remember Popeye? That was a shitty movie that I liked back then. Wasn't Robin Williams, Robin Williams was in Williams that, right? Robin Williams was yeah. Popeye. Yeah. I only saw that one time, I think. Yeah. And Shelley Duvall was in it. Shelley she was Duvall. olive oil. Yeah. That was some perfect casting right there. Fucking stupid shit. Although I love Fuck Shelley it, I'll go back and watch Blue Lagoon. And love that shit. That was also good. I like. I yeah, remember yeah. liking that. We got to revisit Blue Lagoon. When's some? When's the last time someone has mentioned Blue Lagoon? I can't remember the last that time. It was probably crazy. you, actually. That was, crazy. <laughs> that was. I think that might have almost been. Wouldn't that almost be child porn by today's standards? It's it's skating the lines. It's skating them lines. Yeah. I was rewatching. You know, what I was rewatching the other day. It's on Tubi. If anybody wants to watch it for free, uh, was Flowers in the Attic. Yeah. Uh, which was based on the book, and actually they toned the movie down quite a bit from the book, because I remember reading yeah. the book when I was a kid and being like, ooh, incest. Um, yeah. Teenage incest, nice. So, like, brother and sister kind of uh, getting it on there. I mean, they're trapped in an attic. They yeah. don't have anybody else. So, I can understand that. Whatever. What was that other one that, uh, oh, what's her name was in? <clears throat> Who, Brooke Shields? Yeah, Brooke Shields. Pretty Baby? Pretty Baby. That was chi- straight up child porn right there. Yeah, I think she might have only been 12. Yeah, that was that. straight up child porn. I mean, I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure it was, that was, there back was a big before. controversy about yeah, that. Yeah, there was... <laughs> that was when it was okay to exploit children yeah, in movies. There Everyone was, was like, whatever, no big. There was no PC back then. No one cared. No, nobody gives a shit. I mean, in some ways it's better that people care nowadays, because yeah. fucking a 12-year-old, that's not cool. But yeah, you know. the whole idea was is the shit was wrong and fuck you. That was the idea. Pretty much. I feel and, like... Th- yeah, it was wrong, but... And the, fuck you, you know what? That could be the entire, like, mission statement of yeah. the 1970s. <laughs> yeah, it's wrong. <laughs> fuck you. They don't, exactly. even care. they don't even care. 70s was fucking balls that, to the wall. That pretty, pretty much sums it up. Yeah. That pretty much sums it up. All right. So, like I said, this guy, Eddie Leonsky, quote-unquote, the Brownout Strangler, I didn't even know about him until I saw him linked at the bottom of the Wikipedia article about the Blackout Strangler, because they were like, hey, here was another guy that did the same fucking shit on another continent. Now, this guy was actually uh, an American. He was born in 1917 in New Jersey. He was the sixth child of Russian-born immigrant parents, John Leonsky, who was a stevedore, I think, and his wife, Amelia. They uh, moved to New York City when Eddie was a baby. Now, after he left uh, high school, or junior high school, in 1933, He went on a secretarial course, uh, finished in the top 10% of his class, so he wasn't a dummy. Um, He had a bunch of, like, clerical jobs, worked at a grocery store, stuff like that. Now, eventually, in 1941, he got called up for military service. Now, his family, it should be said, was not a super happy situation. This wasn't a situation like Gordon Cummins where, you know, as much as they know about his childhood background, it seemed fairly normal or even fairly affluent. 
This family, uh, not so much. There was like a lot of kids. The dad was very abusive um, and an alcoholic and uh, actually died fairly young of uh, alcohol related illnesses. Uh, the mother also had some mental problems, undisclosed what they were. I'm not really sure what they were. That shit crazy. Um, yeah, I guess so. Um, yeah. Some of his, uh, two of his brothers actually ended up in prison or, you know, were actually had other criminal records. And he had another brother that ended up in a mental asylum. Crazy ass family. Now, crazy. yeah, so th this was a guy where, like I said, it's not justifiable, obviously, but it's more understandable when it's somebody that's coming out of a situation like this rather than it just kind of coming out of thin air. So, um, his mother actually, I guess after his father died, she remarried another guy who was also abusive, and so, you know, that didn't go well. Now, the young Eddie Leonsky was, um, he had kind of like a weird, uh, almost like a Norman Bates-like re relationship with his mother. It's like, he got picked on, like, he, he was like really close to her, you know, in the sense that, like, even, like, kids at school would pick on him for being a mama's boy because he was, like, so close to his mom and stuff. But then, on the other hand, he also seemed to hate her and want to kill her. And in some types of serial killers, that seems like a pretty common, like, psychological dichotomy going on there. I'm not, like, you know, I haven't, like, looked it up or anything. But that seems like something that goes on a lot. That, like, they're very... That's why I say it's like a Norman Bates kind of thing. It's like a love-hate relationship right. with their mother and... Because it's a love-hate relationship with their mother, they kind of extend that to love-hate relationship with women. And they almost want to punish all women because of the perceived failings of their mother. Weird. So I feel like there's kind of some of that going on in this case as well. Now, something about Eddie Leonsky, just like Gordon Cummins, who is the Blackout Ripper, this guy also, um, you know, big dude, muscular dude. Uh, you know, he was tall, good looking, uh, you know, blonde hair. He was, a, you know... They called him, uh, I've seen him actually called the smiling psychopath because most pictures that you see of him, he looks like he's got this wide smile. He looks super friendly. He doesn't look creepy in the least. He just looks like a normal dude. And a lot of people at the time said, you know, he was um, real outgoing, uh, real friendly, real gregarious. They said he's something like, um, he's a little narcissistic. Uh, he was very worried about his physical appearance. He was very into weightlifting, physical appearance, all that type of stuff. So he was always like worried about what he looked like. And he was always um, performing. Like something that he would do was he would go in a bar and he would like, you know, buy everyone drinks and stuff. And then he would like, you know, try to like arm wrestle dudes or he would like jump up on the bar and like walk on his hands, like handstands and stuff like that. So he was like he was a show off. Yeah, he was like a show off type of dude. Like I said, like narcissistic. Now, he joined uh, the military in 1941. Now, initially, he was stationed with the 52nd Signal Battalion in San Antonio, Texas. Now, at this point, he starts to uh, drink heavily, which his dad had also done, and becomes kind of an alcoholic. And he sort of became known for drinking whiskey and like putting all this weird shit in it. Like he would put like hot peppers in it or he would put like mustard in it or ketchup or like he would put like weird condiments in there and drink it. I'm trying like, to prove what a bad ass Yeah, like was. as a show off -y type. But like I said, he had a very show off -y, like very loud type of personality. And, you know, he would, like I said, he would jump up on the counters, like walk on his hands and all this kind of other kind of shit. Now, it seems like around this time that... You know, there are kind of like rumors that he attempted to either rape and or strangle a woman. And this was while he was still in Texas. Like I said, he was originally from New Jersey. But he didn't really get um, prosecuted for like nothing really happened at the time. I'm not sure if she didn't press charges or if they just thought it was no big deal or whatever. But you know what I mean? It was kind of swept under the rug. Hmm. Now, in 1942... Um, they shipped him off to Australia. Now, at this point in the war, um, the Australians were kind of like, you know, worried about a, uh, attacks from the Japanese and various other things. So there was like this kind of set up thing where they were going to ship some American soldiers over there, like help them out if they needed it or whatever. So a bunch of American soldiers were arrived in Australia at the time. Now, from everything uh, that I've heard and read and i actually listened to a couple of podcasts about this like a couple that were done by uh a couple of australians and uh one that had by a guy that had uh written a book about this dude 
and they and who was also Australian. So he was talking about how at the time there was some resentment towards the American servicemen who were serving in Australia at the time. They had all that money. Yeah, and that was one of the reasons. Yeah. They said the the American soldiers were much better paid uh, than their Australian yeah. counterparts. They had much nicer uniforms. You know, the Australian ones. They had that better. accent. They, yeah, they had the accent, and they said that the Americans actually largely had better manners than the Australians. They were very hmm. uh, genteel. Hmm. Uh, they addressed everyone as sir and ma'am, and like a lot of people liked that. Um, a lot of women liked how polite they were, how much money they had. You know, they seemed very friendly and outgoing and stuff, which the Australian soldiers kind of like, they didn't like that so much because they're like, hey, we don't have any money over here. And perhaps they were not as quote unquote refined as they perceived the Americans to be. It was actually kind of the same in England too, though. And the, the American soldiers were popular in England. They would yeah. say they were overpaid and oversexed. Oversexed and, and over here. here. <laughs> that was very common. Yeah, you know what I mean? There, there's a stereotype that Americans are fucking kind of oldfish and Actually, uh, American... It depends American, on the person. I was in the Army, and American soldiers were fucking popular everywhere we went. And let me tell you, the number one place where we were fucking superstars, Israel. Really? Oh, yeah. When we were in Israel, we were fucking superstars. <laughs> I hooked up with a female Israeli paratrooper. It was fucking... I ain't gonna even fucking go down that route. <laughs> that girl was good looking. Those people treated us like fucking kings. Interesting. Oh, we were... Uh, you know, and we were in Korea. And we, you know, I even went through Germany. No. Best I was ever treated was in Israel. Hmm. Yeah, it was awesome. And fucking, we were on our best behavior. Yeah. Korea would make you act bad. The way they come <laughs> at you. But Israel, where there was... You know, they, they treated you with respect... They treated you as if you were, all, you know what I mean? Like they came at you like you're a respectable person, so you you responded in kind. Yeah. And at that time, you know, we had given them a bunch of jet fighters, and we had a bunch of, you know, support going to them. They fucking, we got along fucking great. I was hanging out with fucking dudes that had served in the Gaza Strip, and you know, and you know, you know, dudes that were doing some heavy duty fucking combat patrols through Gaza. Man, they were fucking cool. Buy drinks all night long. Huh. Yeah. One thing that I Israel's found... Israel's good troops, man. Real yeah. good troops. And, you know... Let me tell you, you know, some people, some people in America might kind of think, well, Israel and Israelis, they must be kind of like Jewish Americans. They're not. It's a totally different culture. They're from another country. Um... When you when you meet them, they're just uh, in those days they were very macho. Uh, they were kind of a lot like Americans in a certain way. I mean, that's yeah. all I'm gonna say. You know, and then, you know most of, most of the guys had served in some kind of a military function in their country. So when you dealt with an Israeli, you were dealing with an ex-military guy. So you you know what I mean? You were coming at him like this. Yeah. And under the radio, listening, they can't see what I'm doing, but he's the, doing that the thing where I'm thing. pointing at your eyes. Yeah, like, it's like yeah, an eyeball me. thing. Yeah, Ex they were everybody was ex-military. So you're one thing like that a, one thing that kind of fascinated me when I was researching these two cases was the difference in perception between American servicemen in England and in Australia. So it's like funny that in England. They thought they were boorish oafs, and yet in Australia, they thought they were, like, super polite, which is very funny yeah. to me. So I'm like, the truth is probably somewhere. Well, you know... <laughs> Comparatively. Australians are pretty close to Americans in, in I've always, way. like, kind of thought of them that way. Yeah. They're closer to Americans than, well... Than I British are. I don't so. know about that, because I well, lived in the UK for a while. we know girls that married guys in Australia and lived down there for a while. They loved it. Yeah. I feel like in a lot of ways, Australian culture is very similar it's to more, American culture. They like hot rods and, you well, know. Well, they have a, a similar history a similar also. similar history. They even kind of had cowboys. I mean, they have they had an aboriginal yeah. type of thing that were displaced just like Native Americans kinda were like displaced an, here. Right. Yeah, they had, so it's, they have a similar history. Kind of closer. Yeah. yeah. So I kind of feel like culturally they're coming from a more similar yeah. place. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, quote unquote, a newer country. Now, you know, your ethnic group might have something to do with it, but maybe not because I would, you know, I mean, fucking, 
I don't know. I, th- I kind of feel like the country where you grew up or where you went to school yeah. like m- is more influential than the family that you came from. I always yeah, feel like. probably. Because, you know, I'd see some shit go down between, you know, African-American U.S. soldiers and foreigners, you know what I mean? And you could definitely tell that people were from different cultures and different fucking countries. You know, you just had to be there to understand what I'm talking about, you know what I mean? Like, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but African American soldiers were super popular and they were always super popular in Germany. Oh, yeah, especially I've heard that. with the women. Yeah, I've heard that. Uh, black dudes know how to run game on German girls. Okay, they're, <laughs> they're offering something that German guys don't have in a certain way, you know what I mean? Now, bringing them back to the United States didn't work out too well all the time, you know, with some of these marriages. Because, you know, uh, German American girl, excuse me, German girls, they, they don't want to live in the hood, you know what I mean? So you better be living in a nice place. Because those girls are kind of pampered, you know what I mean? But as far as human to human interactions, no, African Americans run game on German girls. This is fucking I've well heard that. Known. I knew another yes. another guy that actually was uh, yes. served in Germany. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, he said the You same. better watch out. <laughs> the BBC coming at you. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah so yeah like i said i thought that was very interesting that there there was a lot of um you know it's a, not like overt resentment but there was some kind of like you know australian soldiers like looking at american soldiers like man they got nicer shit they got more money yeah. they have more money to like go out clubbing and like take girls out to dinner and like go to right. prostitutes and stuff and they were kind of resentful that they didn't have that so into this you know mix comes Eddie Leonsky. Now, he arrives in Melbourne, Australia in February of 1942, which, if you will remember, was exactly the same time that fucking Gordon Cummins was doing his shit in England. It was in Mm. February. So, Leonsky gets to Australia in February. Now, he is sent to Camp Pell, which is in Royal Park. Uh, Pretty much as soon as he got there, he started getting in trouble. Because, like I said, he was an alcoholic, just like his dad was. He started uh, fucking drinking. And they also, uh, he also allegedly uh, tried to rape a woman in St. Kilda. Now, her name, I believe, was Doreen Justice. Uh, He tried to rape her. She fought him off. He left some of his clothing in her apartment. And she later turned that over to police. She had also seen him naked. So she reported to police that he had a very distinctive mole on his penis. Hmm. So that was something that would identify him later on at this point they're not really looking for him because like i said this is just an attempted rape just an attempted rape but you know what i mean like consider like in light of what he would do later whatever so he um kind of gets in trouble for that just for being like drunk and obnoxious in public he gets 30 days in the stockade but got released nothing really came of it but then he started like a fu- another fucking drinking binge now May the 3rd, 1942, like I said, this is only a few months after fucking Gordon Cummings was, Gordon Cummings was doing that shit in England. May the 3rd, there's a woman named Mrs. Ivy McLeod, and she was found murdered in, in a, like a store doorway next to the Bleak House Hotel in Albert Park in Melbourne. Now, this crime was immediately called a brownout crime. Now, like I said, Australia, they didn't have... Their their wartime stuff wasn't as stringent as England. I mean, England was like no street lights. Everybody would paint their windows black or put curtains up. No, like, no lights whatsoever. Whereas Australia had more like a brownout type of thing where they were like, well, we'll just put on every other street light. Just keep your lights low. Like, you don't have to turn them completely off, but let's kind of just keep it sort of darkish or dim just so the just in case the Japanese decide to attack, so maybe they won't be able to see so good. So it wasn't quite as dark as England, but similar. So like I said, that's why they call them the Brown Strike. So, but they initially, they really, uh, you know, immediately called this a brownout crime. So six days after this first one, which was Ivy McLeod, he kills another woman who was 31 years old. Her name was Pauline Thompson. This was on May 9th. Now, she uh, had been at a club or a bar or whatever, and she was seen in the company of an American serviceman. So, obviously, he was in his uniform because people identified him as such. Now, they found her strangled to death the following morning. Mm. Now, a weird thing that he would do... He didn't mutilate them necessarily. He didn't even rape them. 
But something that he would do is he would kill them and then he would take their clothes off and like pose them so that whoever found their body like had to look right at their, like he would spread their legs out. So like whoever found to lay the it body. Out like a buffet. Like, yeah, like, like so whoever yeah. found the body would have to be like confronted yeah. with, hey, female genitalia yeah. right there in your Coach. face. Yeah, like that. This he, is common actually in a, yeah, lot, of, a lot of serial It is. They tend to leave the victim in a compromising position. To humiliate to, to kind them. of like, yeah, supposedly humiliate. Who knows what they're actually, what a serial killer is actually thinking at the time, but might be, might be that. I kind of feel like that. And like I said, I, I mean, feel their like. their standards are different. So, you know what I mean? It's hard yeah, to understand like, what they're know, thinking. And I can see why we have difficulties with profiling because. They're sexualizing the victim. Because most of us, hopefully, are yeah. not serial killers. Right. So it's hard to get inside that mindset. I mean, all you can do is, like, intellectually try to I don't justify, really, not justify what they're doing, but, like, just try to, in, like, intellectually get a handle on it. I don't really think the emphasis is on humiliation of the victim. I think it's more about the sexualization of the victim. Or, yeah, feti- yeah like a fetishizing. To show the, they're trying to show the witness what they saw. That's what I think. It's more it could of, be more that, yeah. That it's like, yeah. look, maybe they're trying to make the people that find it like see what they the, saw. What they saw, like, it. like, damn, you know, check out how hot she like, was. Yeah, that that, that that might that, be that that might very right. well be the case. I think it's more along that line. Like I said, I think it's harder for like a quote unquote normal person mm-hmm. to like understand. I mean, because a serial killer. I mean, obviously, that's like way off the fucking charts of like. Look how hot she is. That's why I did it. That's yeah. probably what they're... Like, now they'll understand. Now they'll understand me. Because they'll see where yeah. I'm coming from, even right. though everyone's just like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. He's, yeah, that's horrifying. But yeah, so that was something that he tended to do. Like I said, he didn't really rape them or mutilate them the way Gordon Cummins did, but he would definitely like pose them in a way that implied that he was trying to display them in you're that right, way. Yeah. So, yeah. So, as I said, uh, Pauline Thompson was the next victim. She was 31. She had been seen with a young man in an uh, American serviceman's uniform. And uh, also, I guess people had seen her in a bar and they heard the guy talking and they said he had an American accent. So, they figured, like, from the jump that he was an American serviceman. Now, the next one happened um, a little more than a week later. It was May 18th. Like I said, the last one was May 9th. This was a 40-year-old woman named Gladys Hosking. Now, she was... I'm not sure if she was a prostitute or not, but she was just, like, walking through the street one night, minding her own beeswax, uh, near Melbourne University. And when they found her later on, she was... Same thing. She'd been naked and posed. She was, like, all covered with mud. Now, in this particular night, um, a guy later reported to police that a disheveled American man had come up to him out of breath and asking for directions. And this person noted that the guy's uniform was covered with mud, just as Gladys Hosking's body had been found. So there was that whole thing. Now, just as in the case of Gordon Cummins, this guy, thankfully, you know, this happened only over a couple week period. Um, He was caught pretty much immediately because he didn't seem to be making any particular secret of what he was doing or (coughs) or trying to hide it or anything like that it's like he's leaving bodies pretty much in the open he's letting himself be seen with these victims so it it doesn't seem like he's like some big fucking mastermind or anything like that just like this is like somebody that's again taking advantage of a situation just like the guy in the first case um i don't know if i mentioned it before but he was only 22 or 23 years old at the time so at this stage, so he killed three women in just a couple weeks. And he was pretty much picked up immediately because one witness very uh, famously said, it's a guy that walks on his hands. And Eddie Leonsky was very famous right, for, walking, for walking around on handstands, like showing off like he did, like he would go in bars and he would walk on his hands and stuff like that. So people pointed out to him, him to police like pretty quickly and he had also left a couple of his uh rape victims or attempted rape victims alive Mm -hmm. so there were several several witnesses that were able to identify him 
so when police like suspected who it was they kind of got all these people together like they did a lineup of a bunch of american servicemen i believe one of the witnesses was even the aunt of one of the first women that had been attacked but hadn't been murdered like the first attempt at rape and she immediately like pointed to him and said yeah that's him he's pretty distinctive looking like i said it's i have pictures of him um it's creepy because <coughs> it's creepy because he doesn't look creepy he just looks like a regular friendly he's like you know he's blonde hair he's a big old muscular dude he's got a big old smile it's like he just looks like a regular guy so he uh pretty much immediately got arrested and charged with the three murders now, because there was so much, I'm, I, you know, I'm not going to say <clears throat> that it was like super tension or anything like that, but there was kind of uh, some conflict between how they were going to charge him. It's like, were they going to charge him by like American military rules? Would they charge him by Australian rules? Because he had killed Australian women. Um, so there was kind of some controversy there about how he was going to be punished or put on trial or whatever. They decided that <clears throat> that he would be tried um, by a United States court martial. Now they initially tried to portray him as not fit to stand trial um, on the basis of insanity, and they tried to do that by saying, "Oh, look at all this crazy shit he drinks! Like he puts fucking hot peppers in his whiskey. It's That's like not crazy. It's being he a says all, well, he says all this crazy shit, and also." And I'm not sure where he got this from, but when they asked him what his justification was, he would say that he wanted these women's voices. He what? had a thing for women's voices. And I think that when they kind of looked back into his history, I guess he had a thing where his mom used to sing to him in this kind of high pitched voice. And he was kind of into that and not at the same time. It was oh, like my. kind of a weird thing. And, but no, but like I said, but sometimes yeah. when he would get drunk, yeah, he would start to sing in this really like a high pitched woman's voice, like a lunatic. Yeah. And so, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure like how truthful this was because it should be noted that there was a movie out at the time might have been Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I'm not really sure, but there was a plot point in it where like one of the villains was like, Oh, I'm going to kill her and take her voice or whatever. So I feel like he might've gotten it from that or maybe not. I'm not really sure. I think he bullshitted. He's it trying. does really seem like that, but it, it, it seemed he did say that. And that was a big thing that he was, he was like, I was trying to, he's like, I loved their voices so much that I wanted to take them. That I wanted to keep them. I'm not that was lie. one thing. I'm and I don't know if he was just trying to get an insanity He's trying defense. to get an insanity plea. He's because trying, he, he would say that he was a real-life Jekyll and Hyde. He said that. He's, try, he's trying to get an insanity plea. And he's trying, <coughs> to, trying to paint an image to the public that he's some kind of disturbed guy. And that, uh, you know what I mean? He had a higher motive for yeah. all these. No. It was about the pussy. That's what it yeah. was. He was killing them. You know what I mean? He was killing well, these women. Well, yeah, and it should be noted and that one of his early victims... Maybe the he, voices attracted him. He thought that was hot. Yeah. But that's not why he was doing it. You know what I mean? He he wanted to have sex with him and he wanted to kill him afterwards. That's what it is. It's just that simple. And he, you know what I mean? He's not going to go in front of a jury of people and... And just you know, say, hey, and I say, just you know to what I mean? People. You know, I wanted to get my rocks off. I wanted to have sex with the chick. She was hot. And fucking when I'm fucking... And then for whatever I'm busting reason... A nut, when I'm busting a nut, I like to see him die. He's gonna say that. Yeah. Even so though in ninety nine percent of That's what it cases, is. That's the That's case. what it is. <laughs> that's fucked up, but that's probably yeah. true. It's like yeah. it's probably no more complicated. It's not that complicated. And it's like and it should be noted too that one of his early victims who act his one of his uh attempted rape victims, I believe, who actually survived, she said that he said to her, you know, when she was walking down the street, he said something to the effect of I feel like strangling a dame and you're as good as any. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean? He, it's not like he wants to go through and, this whole rigmarole of dating somebody and having sex with them and breaking up God, with them. so much work. He doesn't, well, it's too much work. It's, be <laughs> it's better to God. just rape them. It's better to just rape them. Rape okay? them and kill them, then you have to worry and about you it. Can't let them, you can't let them live after that, so you choke them out. Yeah. And then that becomes part of the whole ritual. Choking them out and watching them die becomes part of the whole experience and then bitch can't cheat on you after that because she's dead so in a way it's kind of like owning them 
Can I just yeah, um? About, can I just interject like, right here? Like, I got that, me a girlfriend, raped her, killed her, and then she's not cheating on me after this. Can I just interject right here yeah. that um, dude's thought processes are very different from mine. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> what he's doing. You know what I mean? That's I'm the very, last one she ever got. That's a very different. It says yeah. shit. Like shit. Sometimes shit that he says. Like he's not a serial killer mm. uh, that I know of. Mm. But um. You'd have known by now. Yeah, that's you'd think. Yeah. Yeah, he's not a serial killer, but he can kind of get into their, like, because, like, some of the shit he says, I'm like, honestly, that would never occur to me. Yeah. That's not. This is a very male behavior. Yeah, it's just shit that doesn't occur to us. It's like, why the fuck would you even think of that? It's like. No, it's a very male behavior that he's doing. This is why, this is, we know women don't do this. This is a male thing. See, this is why we don't. This is testosterone. We don't need y'all in the I'm hands of a. This is testosterone. The effects of testosterone in the man in the in in, in the hands of an of an untermesh. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. A fucking subhuman. You know what I mean? This is what what an underman. You know, an inferior man in a certain ways. He doesn't want to go through all that. See, and this is why, is. like, every time, like, a dude even, because like, walks if, up to me, I just want to yeah, miss them. The reason why he doesn't want to go through all that is because he would lose if he had to go through all that. You know what <laughs> I mean? He's not going to win against fucking healthy guys. So he's just going to go talk to some chick that he's attracted to. going to rape her. And then he's going to kill her afterwards. Because he gets what he wants regardless. Exactly. And then he doesn't have exactly. to deal with it afterwards. Exactly, because it's just a woman. That's what his thinking like, is. His thinking is it's just a woman. We don't matter. They don't really matter to him. We don't he, mean I anything. mean, he's got a busted nut. What does that have to do with And this? that's all what that does that matters. What does that have to do? That's all that matters. That's, what, it's, that's the it's most important just thing that, in the world. It's just that stupid and it's just that simple. Yeah. That's what that, level you know these what? guys it's like, are at. I, like, intellectually, I know what you're saying, but like, yeah. you know, it always like depresses me when, yeah. whenever we get into these conversations. I'm like, yeah. man, it's like... No, like no offense to dudes that listen to the show. It's like, like yeah. I have I have some like beautiful, wonderful like friends that are dudes and yeah. always have. This isn't in normal general, dudes though. In general, I have kind of a dim view of dudes. This is not normal but, dudes though. This is not normal. That's dudes. true, okay. but I I don't know. I kind of feel like know, it's a either. spectrum. It's a spectrum. It is a spectrum because spectrum. even dudes that aren't serial killers, this like is, even a couple couple down from that is still not like fun to deal this with. This is the extreme end of the spectrum though. Well duh. You know what I mean? That's why I don't yeah. have any fucking mercy for the dudes. You see I hear all these fucking programs of people trying to fucking psychoanalyze and in a way almost kind of glorify or you know what I mean? Or, or kind of like glamorize these serial killers as, as if they're some kind of a Hannibal Lecter, almost kind of like anti superhero or something. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. not what these are. I don't, these, I don't like that. These are dudes. Like these are dudes trying to come. Yeah, that's all it is. Like I'm not saying I like I love like serial killer movies. I'm gonna put movies. my dick in it. I'm gonna put my dick yeah. in it. I'm gonna try to. But bust like you nut. said, most of these they're not like fucking Hannibal Lecter. They're no. not, that is a fictional no, 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 character. No, no. Yeah, it's, most exactly. serial killers are dumb they're ass rapists. motherfuckers. They're rapists. Yeah, they're just stupid, right. animalistic. Right. They're like, w- some of them are cunning, sure, yeah, yeah. and they get away with no. it for a long time, but they're not smart, they're not cool, no. they're not, like, they're exactly. nothing like that. These dudes are rapists. Because why would they have to do that otherwise? Yeah. Right. If they were really smart or competent or cool or anything, they wouldn't have to, like, do this kind of crap. They're rapists. Yeah. They're just going to rape a, rape a woman. Yeah. Okay. Because they can't, because it, in they a can't, way... They can't get it any other way. Yeah. Like I said, in know. a way, they're afraid and, of women. Yeah. They're, like, intimidated right. by women. They know that they can't Inferiority get it Inferiority complexes sure. and stuff like That's that. That's exactly what it and is. And then the struggle of all this rape, okay, the backlash and the emotional charge of all this rape mixed with murder becomes part of the experience you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It becomes merged with sex. Well, yeah. So it's sex It's all a and control murder. issue exactly. because they feel like they don't have any right. control over their own life. Now, they don't have any control right, over right. women. They don't have any control over what other people are doing, so they have to impose it. Right. And now, once they're caught, they're not going to say this to the authorities. Well, of course not. They're going to have to make up another explanation because what's really going on is fucking embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> so they're going to say, well, I heard these voices and the souls called out to yeah, me. Yeah, it was like and Ursula and the little mermaid, and I had to, like, steal her voice because it yeah. was so beautiful. Really what happened was is that he saw some chick that he wasn't, that he couldn't get by any other legitimate means, so he overtook her by violence, and he used her as jerk-off material, all right, yeah. and then killed her so she wouldn't rat him out. 
Yeah. And that was that was the experience that And that he had. became part of the whole That was the experience that he got. It's like a third rate sexual experience. It yeah, and I feel like that might be like yeah, there are some exceptions like cuz I do feel like there are some serial killers that have some other like super weird shit going on. But I think like you, most of your run oh, of the, average though. Run of the mill serial yeah, killers mill like serious, right, yeah. 80 90 percent of your serial killers other than the ones that have like yeah. really 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 bad problems that are like really <laughs> fucked up like necrophilia and shit. That's a whole other issue. But um most of your serial killers, most of the even people that do like one or two off, like dudes that I've written about that even they never caught, I feel like all they're doing is it's an opportunistic thing. It's like, oh, I'm a truck driver and I was like driving down the highway, yeah. I saw a prostitute and, and then it's more like masturbation because the it woman is like was, that. Because the woman wasn't into it. No, of course. So you were on your own, dude. Yeah. You might as well have just used your hand. Yeah. You know what I mean? And a fucking leash it off to kill your hand yeah, afterward. And, and use your hand in a damn video screen. Or they a have photo. flashlights, you know. It's right. The 21st so century. you know what I mean? You're dealing with fucking dudes that their sexuality is not well developed. Yeah, you know that's I mean? an understatement. That's exactly what, what that's you're an dealing understatement. with. You know what I mean? They haven't. These dudes are not successful dudes. And that's what I mean. Yeah. I and that's the problem I have. Like I said, as fascinated I am, as yeah. I am with like true crime and serial killers and stuff like that. I do feel like there's a problem with glamorizing them or like make yeah. them seem like cool More or badass or were. heroes or anything. But most of these people are just, they're just scumbags. It's yeah. like they're just scumbags. It's like they can't get laid like by normal means. So they have to like force it. Like you said, it's not, these aren't like dudes you want to like look up to. It's no. not, there's nothing badass about no, them. No, the closest one to a dude that might have been <clears throat> suitable to be a say boyfriend would have probably been Bundy. And he had a girlfriend. And he had a girlfriend, but it was who tried to report him, but they didn't listen to but her. But that would have been a superficial relationship because he kind of had that damn psychopathic. Well, he had that like dual personality that, thing going on. He was kind of like a pathological liar mm -hmm. and stuff too, real, real superficial. Which to me, so that he was not really able to have a relationship. So he did what he did because that was the only way he could get it done. Really. Yeah. You know what I mean? To me, that's scarier because. He couldn't enjoy anything other than that. This is all a very superficial for them. Yeah. This is not to deep me that's scarier because, like I said, you know, a lot of dudes that end up serial killers or you know if they kill two, three, four women, you know, most of them are creeps and like yeah. you know you would avoid them if you you know came across them if you were just like walking down the street and you saw them you'd probably like run away. But somebody like Ted Bundy, that's why he's so dangerous, is because he seems so normal and some of them do like. And I feel like those are the ones that are most dangerous, and that's what makes me, like, not want to trust anybody, because, like, every, you don't know, like, if that normal person... Because look how long, like, he was doing that shit, and his girlfriend didn't know. Yeah. I mean, she did report him early on. Like, she didn't know, but she was, like, suspicious. She knew something was up with the guy. She knew something was weird, and she was like, oh, he has the same car, and he looks like that, so... I mean, you know, fair play to her that she reported There's him. There's always going to be kind of a certain dimension missing out of these guys. Yeah. To where you're like, this isn't right. Why is this guy do what? This guy doesn't react like other people. Yeah. There's always like a dimension missing from their personality in terms of emotions. I mean, you know, I can see it. Yeah. You know, I've seen it in a lot of dudes. And it's always a guy who's a fucking pathological liar. Yeah. Pathological lying and a person that fucking constantly lies and tries to be something that they're not. They they are not all serial killers, but all serial well, killers are all, like that. All serial killers have that personality. That is a huge red flag. Right. Right. I mean anybody that can't be like completely honest with right. you or can't Right. Or, I feel like somebody that anybody that can't like if they have some kind of weird like emotional thing where they can't like open they're trying, up or, trying to be somebody that they're or not, they're trying to be somebody that they're not or something like that's that. That's all yeah. part of pathological lying. It's it's they're trying to be more than what they are and they're constantly trying to make a fake air about themselves. That's them. Yeah, serial killers all have that. Yeah. All people like that are not serial killers, but serial but killers. Ever, but all, all serial have killers that. Pretty much have that. Yeah. Well, you'd have to because, like I said. Even people that are like scumbags, like, you know, fucking yeah. whatever, and they're serial killers. But even they have families and stuff like that that are always like surprised when they get caught. So they obviously have some kind of like, like normal veneer. Yeah, well. They seem like some dude that gets caught, hey, he murdered like 10, 20 women or whatever over 20 years and they just now caught him. 
do you ever see like people ask his family members or neighbors and they're like yeah i knew that motherfucker yeah just here. they never say that they never do mm. They never say that. Yeah. And I don't know if it's because, like, family members are, like, blinded. You don't want... They're blinded. You don't want to know that you're... They're blinded. You know, that your family member is a serial killer. Always keep an eye out for a person who's very superficial and always putting on airs. Yeah. Trying to fucking role play. They always seem like a damn live action... A LARPer. They always well, because seem they like don't know how to be a real person, they, they are, they, so they, they're always like trying exactly. to. They're well, trying not, to be a real person. They can't be themselves because there is no self. Yeah, it's like there's something missing. So they always seem to be kind of like larping. Yeah. And well, I that's know, what they're doing. Right. Yeah. That's what right. they're doing. They and, don't. There's no there there. There's right. like the or they know enough. To know that what they really are, right. quote unquote, is fucked up. Right. And they know that they'll be caught if they show that. So right. everything about them is right. a front. It's an artifice. Yeah. Everything. And, and, and a wise person can spot it. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm not like... A wise person can spot it. I don't it. like want to shit at people that, on shit on people that don't because some people, people never... Yeah. Most people are not equipped with the defenses that you need in order to spot it. But if you watch enough serial killers... Okay, and you have a good IQ. If you watch enough serial killers, their um, uh, interviews, you can see that there's a vibe. You can feel it. Oh, it's like they're LARPing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that there's not much to them. That they're very superficial and shallow. You will see people like that in your lives. Those people are not all serial killers. Most of them are not. But it's probably safer. But every to just serial run killer the fuck away has that anyway. vibe to of them. Yeah. They just do. Because I'm always saying, like, like I said, I'm not saying everybody like that's a serial killer. Obviously, they're not right. serial killers. But all so serial that's killers a very small have that vibe. Percentage, but and I'm saying this particularly to women because I know women have like a big thing about like not trusting their instincts and yeah. stuff. But if you're around a dude and like everything about you is going, man, get away from this dude, yeah. get away, get from, away that from that dude. dude. Because yeah. there is some reason why. It's like even if you don't know, you can't justify it. It's just like get the fuck too away many from lies, it. too yeah. mu- too much of a fucking fake front. Uh, you know what I mean? That should all be warning signs. Yeah. You know. What I mean? And like I said, like. You can't like blame victims all the time because some dudes are really, really good yeah. and at manipulating are, other people, and right. that has happened in many and cases. There are other kind of psychopaths and bad guys that are not serial killers and they're not sexually motivated doing other things. But you know, when you're talking about a serial killer, always remember that what you're dealing with is a serial rapist. They just happen to kill people to silence the witness. Yeah. And then the killing of the people to silence the witness becomes part of the experience that they look for. It's a it's a sexual orientation, uh, but these motherfuckers are not normal. They're like well, you know, they're I, they're I they're, they're like uh, they're almost kind of autistic in a way, you know. Like, well, not to shit on autistic. Not to shit people, on autistic people because most autistic people don't. They ever, don't do that. But I'm just well. Saying, I don't think any autistic no. people have ever done anything but like this. It, not that I know. It's of. it's a personality. Uh, what do you call it? Well, there's a type. Defect. Sure, it's a personality. I mean, defect. and I'm not saying like because serial killers come in a couple different flavors. Yeah, I and mean, there is just, like there's a couple different types. Yeah, and almost all of them are addictive personalities too. They have addictions and stuff, and if they like something that's good, then they'll just keep doing it over and over and over again. Almost all of them. Which, like I said, that's yeah. like weird to me too. It's all part of their behavior. They're all jack off artists too, you know, peeping tom types. A lot can't, of them do start like can't that. Can't keep their hands off themselves and shit. You know, that's the way they are. Well, like I said, I feel like this dude, um, you know, the brownout strangler, uh, Eddie Leonsky. He kind of started out, like I said. Blackout Ripper, Gordon Cummins, like I said, he didn't really have much of a history of this type of thing. It seemed like, oh, just the war, and he just kind of like, oh, okay, I'm just going to kill everybody. There's a lot we don't know about but, this, But, yeah, the, like I said, a lot of his history is not known. He right. doesn't have a criminal record, so I that's guarantee kind of he was a dude kind of like fucking uh, uh, um, other serial killers. He's well, they got... think, like, after they caught him and hanged yeah. him, um, Scotland Yard looked into it and there were a couple of unsolved murders that happened yeah. in 1941 like a year like a few months before and they thought maybe he might have done those as well so it wasn't kind of like he probably had a similar background it wasn't proven but and a similar childhood to Bundy or uh, who else 
you know, um, the guy who killed all the fucking dudes. Um, well, there was a lot of those. Jeffrey you know, Dahmer? Dahmer, Dahmer, yeah. He's, he's, this guy kind of like that, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I it's always, not gay, straight. You know? Every time they catch one of these motherfuckers... They have a lot of, so much shit in common. Yeah. Well, and I kind of feel like they probably did a lot of shit earlier that yeah. they didn't get caught for. Or they were particularly, juveniles, so it wasn't Well, recorded. yeah, like, particularly back in this, like, particularly this shit that happened back in the 40s, when, one, it was during wartime, uh, two, you know, it was old-timey, they didn't have DNA or anything like that, so I kind of feel like maybe they did a lot of shit that they got away with, they got away with it. And no one linked them to it. Typically, these guys start fucking up around puberty. Yeah, I kind of feel like most of them, doing, like most of them yeah. start like minor shit. Teenagers. Yeah. Like breaking and entering. Peeping Tom type shit. And animal torture. Animal torture. That and kind of stuff. Fucking, fucking up Not other always, ch- but 90, per, 90, 95%. Fucking up other children. They do weird shit like that. Yeah, it's like the acting out in school. Like yeah. there's always like arson, bedwetting. That's another yeah. thing. Bedwetting, that's, I don't know why, but it seems like a lot of serial killers, like dudes that end up as serial killers, were bedwetters bed as children. Bedwetters, yeah. And arsonists. Yeah. Although bedwetting doesn't make you a serial killer. No, but I'm just it's saying just, that they said they that do, that's... They do, they have weird shit that That's something it. that I almost kinda, all serial killers had. I kind of think bedwetting has something to do with uh, being molested. And I think being molested maybe causes serial killers in well, some cases. Well, another thing, too, is that it might be, even if it's not molestation, it might be that, like, the kid is bedwetting and then they get punished harshly for right, it. Right, yeah. So and then, then that like a, might be... Right. Yeah, so that so might... So it's like a masochism. Contrib- right, so that yeah. might contribute to it maybe. also. So it's it might not right. even be, like... Yeah. I mean, that, and that might be, like, a symptom of stress because yeah. they're just, like, getting... Yeah, I haven't looked much. Punished in... all the time, and then that yeah. makes them like bedwet more because they're under more and it, stress. And it involves, you know, Freud would say it was involves the genitalia, so it would do that. Because I haven't really looked much into that, but that could be it. Could be that bedwetting and the punishment of bedwetting would be kind of like sadomasochism. Yeah, and I feel yeah, fucking, I definitely feel like there's an which aspect could of that. lead that direction, maybe. Yeah, because there's like an yeah. infantilism there. Yeah. It's like. Especially if they get punished harshly for it, like yeah. some, because you know how like some parents back in the old days were like, if your kid like wet the bed, they would like the weird go, quasi go the like quasi sexual kind of, or they would make like yeah. a huge deal about it, yeah. and like so you so you develop a complex. So I kind of right, feel maybe. like, and I think we've mentioned on the show before, but it's like that's why I think like this era of serial killers like maybe doesn't happen in the same way anymore because I feel like people that had these like. What is pretty normal behaviors for kids? Like, yeah. you know, little kids, like, jerk off. Little kids pee in their beds. Little kids, yeah. It happens, but it's like, if you back do... Back in those days. Back so, in those days, they did, right. like, these weird, like, super strict, like, punishments on yeah, these children, yeah. and it became a whole thing. Yeah, it makes sense. And that would, like, mess them up. Had, had, not, that, to, not to demonize religions, you know what I mean? But, because, you know... You can. I, but, well, <laughs> I got like religious mythology. But the way religions were applied probably had a lot to do with that. So, I don't want to fucking lay it at the foot of religion, but people that took shit too far. If a kid wets a bit, yeah. big fucking deal. That's what I mean. It's yeah. not... That's what I mean. No and I, I kind of feel like that's a lot of the thing. And I, yeah. I feel like any time that parents are overly strict, particularly on something that is natural or is not all that controllable, especially yeah. by a kid... If you come down hard on your kid about that, then Fuck that kid up. is is going to be fucked up pretty much yeah. forever. There's, you know, there's a formative period in yeah, children's yeah. You development. Wanna blow, you want to blow mistakes off. Just let them ride. There's, yeah, that's yeah, what I mean. Yeah. Just, like, chill out. Especially yeah. if it's, like, pee in their bed. It's not, seriously, just he wash would, the sheets. He was probably too scared to get up and take a leak. He that's the what I mean. are going to get him. It's <laughs> really, <laughs> seriously, it's really not that big a deal. <laughs> yeah. And it's, like, I feel like yeah. you... You make a huge deal about it, then the kid is going to make a huge deal. Becky's an authority starts a vicious figure, cycle. In, yeah, and then it's going to become a huge deal later yeah. on. And like I said, they don't all become serial killers, but right. it doesn't help for real, right. especially if that kid was born with like a proclivity toward right. that type and of thing. Right, and then it starts leading a certain individual. And then it's going to just be a whole perfect storm. He might have the wrong genes, and right. then you do that shit, and then it that's what I mean. Genes activate. So then, as parents, yeah. just chill out yeah i mean especially if it's something that's natural (laughs) yeah like i said kids pee their bed kids pee their bed kids jerk off yeah 
Kids do weird shit. Yeah, sleepwalk. They walk. sleepwalk. They're just like, you know, if your kid is gay, if your kid is yeah. whatever, just chill. Just yeah. chill out. It'll, work, it'll sort itself out. It'll sort itself out. Yeah. Don't be judgmental asshole about it, and it'll all be all right in the end, hopefully. Yeah. You know what I mean? Every now and then, I'm not you sure might... those parents exist too much in the United States. I hope and not. The Western I hope world. not. That was, back in the you know, old days, that was back I feel in the like. Old days, yeah. Ooh, man, well, they didn't big... know what they were doing, and they were listening. Clearly. They were listening to other people who didn't know what they were doing. And so look what happened: serial killers. Serial killers, right? So thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you shut it down? I no, I'm just covered. saying we'll have to say what happened to fucking. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. I didn't get to that. I'm trying to end the show, and it's not over with. Yeah, I was gonna say you got off on all the shit. I've been drinking. So, Eddie Leonsky, quote-unquote, yeah. the brown out strangler, yeah. uh, he got arrested, like I said, after only like a couple of weeks of doing this shit. So, yeah. at least they caught him right away for the 1940s. That was pretty good. So, uh, he confessed to the crimes. They tried to make it seem like he was crazy because it's like, oh, I want to steal women's voices and all that kind of crap. Yeah, yeah. But, no one bought it, <laughs> even back then. Right. So, he got convicted, sentenced to death. Uh, by a general uh, court martial on July 17th, 1942, General Douglas MacArthur himself That's confirmed right. the sentence yeah. and signed the death warrant. Kill that motherfucker. He did, yeah. MacArthur Which... was awesome. I love MacArthur. <laughs> I yeah, he, he personally He's signed the execution order. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. He didn't do that like later on. He like fobbed that off on like his secretary or whatever yeah. but in this case he actually did do it now as far as i know eddie leonsky was only the second american serviceman uh ever executed during world war ii so mm. hmm, there's something there so yeah he got uh fucking executed court yeah, martial he deserved it though he did yeah so uh even after he died they were like they, no one wanted to like fucking bury him anywhere. They, they yeah. put him in like a couple cemeteries in Australia. Like we don't want him here. They moved him yeah. another one. They moved him another one. They throw him in the ocean. Uh, no. Okay. I think he ended up buried in Hawaii. Actually, uh, at, like some fucking yeah. Schofield Barracks post cemetery. I think okay. that's where they ended up. Uh, putting I'd have thrown his ass overboard. Yeah. Yeah. Now, although one, some would say that burial sea, of course, is an honor. So maybe that maybe I don't know, man. Sharks might eat you. Burial at sea is an honor. Yeah. So maybe they didn't want to do that. Or crabs would eat you. Yeah. Okay. Which, okay. I feed his ass to the roaches. Hmm. Or yeah. rats. Okay. Now, as I said at the very beginning of this segment, that there was going to be like a surprise fun fact for yeah, MST3K yeah. fans, because I was yeah. very excited about this. So in 1986, yeah. they made a movie about Eddie Leonsky, and it was called Death of a Soldier. No. And James Coburn starred in it, However, the actor that played Leonsky yeah. was fucking Reb Brown. Who's which, that? Oh, if you guys saw, like I said, you MST3K fans, if you saw Space Mutiny, it's <laughs> fucking Blast Hard Cheese. The dude uh -huh. with the big fucking pecs is like, he's just like a super bad actor. He oh, was in Space done. Mutiny. It was on MST3K. Oh, I didn't see it. I didn't that's see like it. probably my favorite episode I think I of saw MST3K. Space Mutiny, but I don't remember. Come on. Big about. McLarge, huge, smash lamp. That was a shit movie. Punt speed chunk. Come Punt on. Speed. That was a shit movie. That was, they made up like all these funny, there's yeah. like even a t-shirt that has all the names they made up <laughs> about this fucking dude. Because yeah. he was like this big muscle head and he was like a terrible actor. Yeah, Reb Brown okay. played this fucking serial killer <laughs> in the movie about Damn. the serial killer in Damn. 1986 and now I have to fucking see this. I watched the trailer on YouTube but I haven't seen the trailer. Fuck that. So that delighted me so much and it like cheered me up after reading about all this horrible murder and mayhem. You know, so hopefully it cheers you guys up as no, well. No, no. Go look it no. up. Rip steak face. No. Come on. No. <laughs> <laughs> you misties know what I'm talking about. Come on. <laughs> He doesn't know what I'm talking no, about. No, I don't know what you're talking about. I saw that movie, but I wasn't impressed. You didn't? So, no. I saw that movie. That was, a, that was a shit movie. It was, but that, well, it, that's why I thought. It might be a good MST. It was. Series, but yeah. It was actually, in my opinion, and like I said, there's a lot of competition in this yeah. area. In my opinion, that is probably peak oh. MST3K. That is like oh, the shit. best Mystery Science Theater episode. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. It was like the best synergy between. She is nerdy as shit. I like MST, but I don't have the fucking literary knowledge that you have. I have, to explain, calling the, out you. I have like, to explain all like, the jokes to him. I like musical humor and fart jokes and shit. 
You know what I'm talking about? He's not very. No, no, I'm not. I'm not elevated. I'm, no, I'm not elevated. In I mean, I like fart jokes too, but well, I, just, I, I, I can also a, I can also appreciate a good Alexander Pope. But the thing joke. is, I you didn't know what read. Saying? To really truly appreciate MST, you have to fucking. You have to know everything. You have to know fucking everything. You have they're, to. They're telling everything. all these jokes. And I'm like, what the fuck are they talking about? And I have to say, like, I'm not bragging or anything, but it's like, you know, I'm not the smartest person in the world, clearly. But that's, that bitch is that's fucking probably, so nerdy and so fucking That's smart. probably like fun. Stephen Hawking. Even, you that know, bitch is so fucking nerdy and smart, it's not even fucking <laughs> fun. But, even during the first run of MST3K, as obscure as most of the references say, but 99% of the references I got. Yeah, that's the problem. I had to look up maybe 1%. Nerdy. I've seen everything, it's I've nerdy. read everything. <laughs> You have to have a fucking vast literary knowledge I do. To, to get all of that. I but do. I don't. I'm just a fucking common man. I know. I'm a common mortal. And they, they'll go off and I'm like, what the but fuck are they talking shit, about? Shit, cool man. Like, although, but although, I'll tell you what. The seriously, new M- though, the, don't the, hate. The, the new hate. MST, I like it better because they dumbed it down a lot. And they'll start fucking doing... I don't know if they dumbed it down, they but... They start doing some musical humor and start singing and shit. Although, and I'm like, yeah, they did yeah, a lot yeah, of that yeah. in the old one, too. Yeah. Um, I, maybe you just don't remember. But, see, on the old one... Because all of them grew up in the same era as me, like, 60s and 70s, so they refer a lot to, like, old movies, old commercials, like, old TV shows that people have forgotten about, so I remember a lot of that shit. You weren't um, born in the 60s. You were the 70s Well, no, but, like, early 70s. But you and knew I, but 60s I saw material. a lot of stuff right, in the yeah, 60s. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And honestly, when I was growing up, I was really interested, because my dad was, like, super into 60s stuff, and he was yeah. into 60s music and stuff, so I was really into, like, older <laughs> stuff, like, even when I was a kid. So, you know, and I read voraciously, so I've kind of read everything from every era. So You gotta be a real brainiac to understand. Well, even if you don't like even if I don't know exactly what they mean, I'm like I'm pretty sure what they're referring to because I've heard of it before, like just, you know, through a thing. Right. But like I said, ninety eight ninety nine percent of the jokes I get. Yeah, I'm like twenty five percent. Twenty five percent. Really, of my that, fee- that yeah, little? yeah, yeah. I'm listening. I do I'm like, like the new one though. I'm like, yeah, the new one. The new one. I'm more like. I don't know if they dumbed it down. They but, dumbed it down. But because, a lot of the um, references are more re- are more recent. That's what I'm saying. They dumbed recent. it down because the new one I can understand about seventy percent of it. <clears throat> okay. Seventy seventy five percent of it. I get it. But now you the have older to, stuff. I'm like. You have to think too fuck? that a couple, like not a lot, but like maybe five percent of the references they make on the old show. Are just shit they understand because that's like inside jokes. Yeah, and I only know that because I read their books. Right. Because <laughs> I'm that much of a dork. She loves that MST. But yeah, I yeah. could watch that every day for the rest of my life, and yeah. I would be totally happy. She could. And she he could. picks on me about it, but no, 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 I don't pick on you about I it. Care. I let you watch it. We're talking about seriously. It. You're watching it, and I'm putting. I'm, with I'm it smart, and, and I'm a nerd, and I don't care. This is uncontrolled. And anybody that like picks on me about it, <laughs> fuck off. All right, Jane, let's shut it down. We finished it for today, right? All right. Okay. I can't believe we like got we ended up with fucking talking about this shit. Like yeah. we always how do we always end up like talking about way different uh, shit? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, but when we're just, talking about fucking serial killers. It's just a show. It's just a show. I guess. It's just a show. Serial All right, come shit. visit us again. Next week we'll be back. Yeah, we're not like I said We don't do the fucking We're not we're not anymore. okay. Well, here's the thing. We recorded a movie review. Yeah, we did some. But I think we, we did it earlier, but I don't think it's going up until after this. It doesn't. Yeah. So, Tom complained at me last time. Yeah, the and He's the like, outro. We don't, we don't need to do that whole outro because you do it the same every time. And it's and like, everybody, everybody knows, knows it. And they're fucking clicking out anyway. Go to our Patreon and go to the all Patreon. this. So it's like, you don't have to say and all that stuff. All that. If you like the show, go ahead and support us on Patreon or send us something off of fucking uh, PayPal. PayPal. All right. Yeah. There's a link in this. If you go to our blog, which is 13o'clockpodcast.wordpress.com, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to yeah, do it. Yeah, and you can find us on Facebook. Yeah, or find us on Facebook. We're all over the place. Just search 13 yeah. o'clock podcast. You'll find us. You guys know where the internet yeah. works. Comment, is. like, and fucking leave messages below. Share it with people. You Share know. it. Yeah. <laughs> you are right. I'm fucked up. I'm, I'm actually surprised that you're still fairly coherent. I've been drinking fucking all night. Because we have recorded three shows Yeah, I've been drinking today. all night. Yeah. If you guys want to know what Tom looks like when he's fucked up, this is it. <laughs> if you're if you're looking yeah, at the yeah. audio podcast, yeah. I was just like yeah. pointing at him. <laughs> there it is. It's like you can't see it, but you can imagine. Just imagine. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to finish the night. All right. So actually, we have to still go watch a movie and then review another movie. I'll be laying up in bed just watching it, falling asleep, probably. Well, I, we have to review it though. I'll still. review it. Okay. 
This should be fun. Stop fucking with me. <laughs> 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 All right, so that'll do it for episode yeah. 153 about wartime serial killers that happen yeah, like in the dudes. fucking darkness. Yeah, fuck they're both dead. They both got yeah. they both got executed. They both <laughs> got caught immediately and executed Hung from immediately. The neck till they were dead. Exactly. Yeah. So at least that happened. At least yeah. it wasn't a situation where they never caught them up. Yeah, no, they got them. So yeah. <laughs> so hope you guys enjoyed this. If that's yeah. the word, and we will see you next time. Bye.